that's the spot everybody wants to be at. You're seeing right there. That's where Danielle Teal is. She is going to be talking to our pole setter, a very happy young man from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, who signed with the Riders Discount Racing Triumph team. He hopped on the Daytona 675R. He went right out on the high banks of Daytona and earned himself a Rolex watch at a pole position. Danny Eslick, number 69, and Danielle's got him as soon as he gets his helmet off. There he is coming to rest in his pit stall. We're going to talk to three riders, we hope, uh, for you here during this uh, brief next couple of moments. Then our starting lineup will be underway for the 73rd running of the Daytona 200. And now let's go down trackside and join forces with Danielle Teal, who has caught up with our pole setter, number 69, Danny Eslick. That's right, Danny is the only Daytona Sport Bike champion here in the Daytona 200 field. Danny, two-time Rolex winner, congratulations on pole. How are you feeling? You're back in the DSP class. Obviously, things are going well for you. Uh, it's awesome uh, to get a, another Rolex is amazing. Uh, one was incredible, and uh, be up front on this ridersdiscount.com triumph, uh, speed and strength, show you how much everybody that's helping me out. Uh, you know, it's pretty amazing to to be up here at the front of uh, the grid for the start of the Daytona 200, one of the biggest motorcycle races in the world. And, uh, you know, I get to start from the front, and hopefully we have a little better showing than we did the last time. There you go, guys. Thank you, Danielle. The thoughts of Danny Eslick, who reminds me a lot of a uh, young Scott Russell back in the day. Scott lived large, <laughs> Eslick lives large, and he's ready to go. We're going to try to get a word with the man who ran second in this race last year from Spring, Texas. He's riding for the Yamaha Extended Service Monster Energy Team on his R6, and that is number eight, Garrett Gerloff. And now let's go back down to the front row of the starting grid for the Daytona 200 to Danielle. Right, I'm with De Jason DeSalvo. Jason, you're a previous winner here in the Daytona 200. Yeah. It was on a Ducati, but you do have experience with the 200 on a Triumph. How are things going for you guys? Yeah, things are going really good. I think uh, the plan today is just to get in the draft and uh, sort of stay in that lead group for a little while and then make our way to the front and try to you know maybe break away maybe run with a smaller group who knows i mean it's it's the 200 i've done this enough times to know that anything can happen and uh we're prepared for it all now you're a father of twins now you had twins last year are you getting enough sleep and are you prepared for this long race yeah absolutely my wife bethany's been uh an, an amazing uh support for, uh, for me preparing for this race and taking care of our babies. And uh, a big shout out to them back home. Um, I miss you guys and uh, see you tomorrow. That's Jason DeSalvo. He won this thing on a Ducati in 2011. And Scott, what a ride. We'll talk about it in a minute maybe if we have time, but he had a tire issue. Um, and went to the back and had to work his way all the way to the front after an unscheduled stop to finish second. And um, it was such a big deal. Triumph bought Double Truck Magazine ads to celebrate a second place finish. I've never seen that happen before. Oh, that's great. And you heard him talking. He's already, he's already gone over as many scenarios in his head that, that could possibly could play out in this today. And that's what you get with an experienced rider like that. He's already thought of everything. And he's dealt with a lot of different things. And, and he knows... The race didn't want until the end. So he's talking about riding along in the pack, which I think is very smart because it's very difficult to make a break on this 600. So we're going to see how it plays out and how Jason decides to play his hand as, a, as the race unfolds. All right, we're going to throw it back down trackside, Scott, one more time. A former rookie of the year from Princeton, Kentucky, riding for the Mean Motorsports team, a motosport.com, as a matter of fact. Jake Lewis, number 85, is with our Danielle Teal. Right, he's no rookie to the Daytona 200. He's back with the same team this year. Jake, third qualifying for the Daytona 200. This is a great place for you to be. Yeah, you know, uh, qualifying was really well. I would have liked to get the Rolex, but, you know, uh, the class is pretty stacked this year, so I'm happy to be on the front row here for the 200-mile race. So uh, hopefully get off to a good start, you know, have good clean pit stops. You know, it's a long 57 laps, so... Uh, Hope to put my motorsport.com mean Yamaha up on top of the step at the end of the race. That That is the thoughts of a fine, young, talented star right there, Jake Lewis out of uh, Princeton, Kentucky. Nice job, Danielle. Appreciate you. We'll be back to you with some reports as the race progresses. Let's start with our starting lineup here. There are 13 uh, 13 rows, and we're going back to that 13th row to our 38th starting spot, number 71, on a provisional, the Apex Race Service Triumph of Lee Farmer. 
Former winner of the race, 1989. This man did it, 37th, starts 37. I got to reference Darrell Waltrip again. He's a numerologist. If you're into numerology, John Ashmead may have a shot. He's on the Peter Brady Racing Kawasaki. Starting in the 36th starting spot on row number 12 is number 84, Anthony Fania from Lebanon, New Jersey, the KSW Racing Yamaha. Going 35th is number 30, Donnie Wright from Sarasota, Florida uh, on the Suzuki. Starting in the 34th starting spot is number 92, Roberto Vargas uh, out of Jacksonville, Florida on the Tuned Industry Yamaha. Going 33rd, number 31, Dustin Apgar from Lincoln, Vermont. Yes, we are going to mention every rider in this race because they deserve it. Number 112, Ricky Orlando from Boulder, Colorado, the Ricky Orlando Racing Kawasaki. 31st is Eric Pinson from Atlanta, number 141. Going off 30th is a young lady that's fit, she's healthy, and she's ready, and she'd like to do a good job this year to 200. Melissa Paris from Oceanside, California on the MPH Racing uh, Honda, number 13. She's going to be uh, touring over in Spain uh, this year in a road race series. Starting in the 29th spot is number 20, Frank Babuska from Pelham, New York on the Babuska Racing Suzuki. Going 28th, number 80, Garrett Willis from Loomis, California. Starting 27th, number 97, Tucker Lancaster from Lincoln, California, the Motosport.com Yamaha. Going 26th, rider number 48 from Valencia, California, the CM Motorsports entry of Chad Lewin. Starting 25th, number 174, Bryce Prince from Bakersfield, California on the Tune Racing Yamaha. Going 24th out of Wisconsin, you heard from him a moment ago, the Gian Gonzalez Racing Yamaha, number 79, Blake Young. Starting 23rd, number 42, Kenny Reedman from Bellefontaine, Ontario, Canada, the RRM Triumph Daytona 675. Going in the 22nd starting spot, Fernando Amantini from Caracas, Venezuela, the Team 7 Yamaha R6. He's wearing number 7. Going off 21st, 2007 winner of this race from Manhattan Beach, California, the D&D Cycles Triumph of Steve Rapp, number 15. Going 20th is number 56, Shane Narbonne from Tinesboro, uh, Mass on the uh, Gian Gonzalez Racing Yamaha. Finished night last year is number 21, Elena Myers from Discovery Bay, California. Two-time winner on this tour on the Castrol Triumph Apex Manufacturing Daytona. Starting in the 18th spot, we're up to the sixth row now. And this is a phenomenal young gun out of Los Angeles, California on the M4 motorcycle road racing Honda. Joe Roberts, barely 17 years old, I'm guessing now. Starting 17th, number 35, Benito Solis from North Hollywood, California. The team H35 Honda CBR 600, one of four Hondas in the field today. Starting 16th, out of Miami, Florida, the Longevity Racing Ducati 848 and the only duck in the field, number 29, Barrett Long. Starting in the 15th starting spot, number 98, Jake Zimke, 06 winner of this classic motorcycle contest from Paso Robles, California, the Geico Motorcycle Road Racing Honda. Going off in the 14th starting spot from Slovenia on the Innotherm Racing Team Yamaha is Bastian Skubik. Starting in the 13th starting spot, number 33. He's a three-time winner at Daytona. He's looking to put his record name in the record book as a 200 winner. Out of New York on the Kyle Wyman Racing Yamaha, number 33, Kyle Wyman. Finishing third last year is Bobby Fong. He starts 12th on the field, wearing number 50 on the latest Motors Racing Castrol Triumph Daytona 675. They're going to roll these, this field in just a matter of a few moments now as all the uh, grid marshals are the only ones left with the riders down track side. Number 52 won it. He won it back in 2012 from Antelope, California, the BP racing entry of Joey Pascarella. Starting 10th, number 41, Luke Mosey from Cambridge, UK on the GB Racing Yamaha. We move to our third row. In the ninth starting spot, number 68, Luke Stapleford from England on the profile racing Triumph Daytona 675. Our next rider starting in the middle of row number three in the eighth starting spot, wearing number 12 on the motorcycle. He gets his mail over in Medellin, Colombia, the Road Race Factory Red Bull Yamaha of Tomas Puerta. 
We move to our seventh starter now. He finished fifth last year in this race. He finished fourth the year prior. He wants to be in the number one spot today on the Yamaha Extended Service Monster Energy Graves Yamaha. His first start with the factory Yamaha team. Keep an eye on J.D. Beach. Starting in the sixth starting spot. He was fourth last year. He's a former Rookie of the Year. Jake Gagne, number 32, on the Road Race Factory Red Bull Yamaha from San Diego, California. Starting in the fifth spot, the double zeros. He's got his own team now. The Yamalu Westby Racing Yamaha from Tulsa, Oklahoma of Dane Westby. We call him the Wolverine. We move to our fourth starting spot. Bad year last year, 28th but he won it in 2011, so he knows how to find Gatorade Victory Lane. He's on the Castro Triumph Sport Bike Track Time Machine. Jason DeSavo, number 40. Let's look at this fast front row. It's uh, got the age and experience of Danny Eslick and the youth and enthusiasm of Jake Lewis. Lewis starts in the three spot. He is uh, only managed to be a rookie of the year, and now he wants to be a Daytona 200 winner for Princeton, Kentucky on the motosport.com mean Yamaha. We move to the middle of the front row, number eight, Garrett Gerloff from Spring, Texas. He's carrying the colors for the Yamaha Extended Service, Monster Energy Graves Yamaha team. Watch for number eight. And finally, to our pole setter, Historically, he puts the Triumph on the box for the last time for the middleweight 600cc motorcycles here in this classic race. It's the Riders Discount Racing Triumph, his brand new ride on this team, and the Broken Arrow Oklahoma guy did it. He put it atop the box. He's got two poles here now, but no victories. Number 69, Danny Eslick. That is your full starting field. And Scott, they're coming home. They're coming back for a quick stop and then we get this thing underway. Yeah, I can watch these guys roll in. I remember back in the day, we used, to, we used to stop right there and top off our fuel again because you've done two siding laps, but I don't see that. So the fuel mods on the 600 not an issue with these guys making it to their 19 to 22 window pit for the first, first pit stop you're gonna see here this weekend. Um, as far as talking about Danny Essick on the pole, what more can you say, man? It, it's gotta be thrilled to uh, have a new team to come in here and steal the pole like he did. He said he got a nice draft off Garrett Gerloff, eight tenths of a second quicker. I think it's gonna tighten up as the green flag stops and that's about to happen in just a second. It is, and uh, if you'd like to tweet questions throughout the 200, do it right now. It's uh, at AMA Pro SBK, and we will get your questions too. Uh, our uh, color analyst this weekend, Scott Russell. Well, it's time. The visors are down. It's man and machine now. Everyone has left the starting grid but these riders and the AMA Pro blue shirted professional grid marshals led by Beth Miller. She's holding the flag at the head of the field. The riders are now really beginning. Scott, what's in your head right now if you're that man right there, Danny Essling? Well, what are you, you thinking? You'd like to get to turn one first and you want to get off the line clean. Do not jump to start. So he's trying to time that light perfect. That's his goal. Looks like he did. They're down and away, heading off into turn number one. As you feel, see the field scream by. They go into turn one, nearly three wide. Getting it sorted out now. Big gaggle of motorcycles back in turn one. I believe thus far, everyone's safely through turn one. They'll head into the International Horseshoe for the first time. Here we have Danny Essick leading the pack right there, and that's Garrett Gerloff in the second spot, and that tall, lanky rider, that's Jake Lewis, who was third on the outside of the front row. Took him a while to kind of get up to speed this weekend, but in the end, was able to put that thing on the front row, and now gives himself a great shot here to win the Daytona 200 as a rookie. So it is an endurance race, and normally you think about the Rolex 24. It has become a 24-hour sprint race. Those guys go full out the entire 24 hours. Same is true here in the Daytona 200. This is no longer a savior equipment till the end kind of deal, is it? No, nah, these bikes are built to last. They're fast, they're tough, they're, they're strong. So these guys can kind of let it all hang out. Dunlop's built a great tire that seems to be having no problem this year here at Daytona. And that'll allow these riders to, to drop the hammer from the green flag all the way to the checkered flag. And I, I suspect that's what you're going to see. You try to separate yourself from the pack. If that doesn't happen, you go to plan B. And you, you fall back in line and you, you try to figure out how it's going to play out. And you, and you just methodically work your way through the race. So everyone uh, working cleanly now uh, through lap number one. Uh, it's uh, a very exciting thing as they run uh, through the chicane over on the back stretch. They'll come into NASCAR three. 
and four in the trioval for the first time. And the fans here in the grandstands at Daytona and you at home on fanschoice.tv are going to get a look at uh, somewhere up around 180 mile an hour. Top speeds are better as they come five wide nearly to the stripe. Scott Russell. That's Dame Westby that got a super duper draft as he dropped down low on NASCAR 4 and the Wolverine leads him into turn one. He's got to be happy with what he's got now. He's in control of the Daytona 200 for this moment. I love your excitement. Garrett Gerloff in the two spot. Pole setter Eslick running in the three spot. Jake Lewis fourth. J.D. Beach fifth. Jake Gagne sixth. DeSalvo seventh. Bobby Fong eighth. Tomas Puerta the ninth spot. Luke Mosey was tenth when they crossed the stripe, but it's on here in Daytona for the 200. Uh, beautiful job by Danielle Teal bringing us all the action down along the hot pit. She'll be back to cover our, some of our uh, pit strategies here just a little bit later on. Well, you saw a big move by Eslick to make that ground up he had lost. He was leading it as they come off NASCAR 4, got shuffled back in the pack, but made a real strong move on the on the Yamaha rider number eight there, Garrett Gerloff, to take over that second spot as they went into the International Horseshoe. I assume that's kind of what it's going to be like. Danny Essex, one of those guys, if you punch him, he's going to punch you right back. And that's kind of how he rides. So keep an eye on the 69, and we'll see if Westby can hold him off as they go around NASCAR 1 and 2 this time. Well, Dane Westby, he, he finally decided, I'm just going to start my own team. I'm going to do my own deal. So he and his dad, they put it all together. They got Yamalube on board. The paint package is beautiful. Now we've got a two-rider race uh, at, headed uh, back into the chicane here. We've got about seven riders in the lead pack. There's about a five bike length distance back to the next five, five bike lengths back to the next four. They're beginning to separate into groups, but when they come back out on the banking in three and four, you see this. You see Westby drop down in the inside. The two Oklahoma boys are leading the way right now off of NASCAR four. It looks like Westby's got some speed in that bike. He was so happy when I saw him earlier, but don't forget the Graves rider. Garrett Gerloff down on the inside. He's showing the speed of that Yamaha as well as they go across the line. Gerloff ain't afraid of no Oklahomans. He said, hey, I'll do a shootout in the OK Corral anytime you want to with these two guys from Oklahoma. And right now, Gerloff is at the point. He's leading Eslick, who's piloting the Riders Discount Triumph. So now we've got the factory Yamaha team coming to the front here in the early going. There are 57 laps is what it takes to make 200 miles here. We're working lap two, and it's a dogfight up front. It looks like a 10-lap sprint race right now. That's kind of how it's going to be for a while. I think these guys attack on these 600s. They're, they're, they're fairly easy to ride. They've all got a handle on their bikes right now, and they feel comfortable. Danny looks really comfortable in the infield. He likes to, uh, likes to push, you know, and he's leading this thing, and Gerloff, you know, he's trying to get his first win on this thing down here, so it's going to be kind of like this, and, the, and there's several riders joining that lead party up there. Jake Gagne is one of those riders in that group. Jake Lewis, Dane Westley, Danny Essex, J.D. Beach is somewhere right there on the tail end of that thing trying to get up there and play as well. Beautiful shot of uh, the riders coming out onto the banking here in turn number one. You can see that 33 degrees of banking right there. You can't walk up that racetrack. Man, you can see it get really tight as they come off the NASCAR floor. That's Essex that's leading it. He looks like he's putting up a big old draft because those are able to draft by him pretty easily on the, on the Yamaha guys are able to get by that triumph early around the banking, which is a good sign for them and maybe not such a great sign for Danny as the race uh, plays out. Number eight is Garrett Gerloff. Gerloff on the uh, Yamaha Extended Service Monster Energy Graves Yamaha. You're watching the double zeros of Dane Westby as they go to work here. The 69 of Danny Eslick gets into the mix. Now they are uh, pairing themselves off just a little bit. This is what you have as they come through the trioval and across the famous stripe. They're sorting it out here. And uh, your top 10 real quick uh, after uh, the just three laps is Eslick, Westby, Gagne, Lewis, and Gerloff. That's your top five. It's Beach, DeSalvo, Fong, Puerta, and Staple. That's your second five in your top 10. That was a good sign for Essex right there. He was able to get that couple bike draft and make the pass before start finish line. So it's a good sign for the Triumph rider to, to be able to fight with these Yamahas. He's got good speed out there on the bank. And that's what you got to have here at Daytona. Legitimately, how much um, how much does your physical conditioning and your training come into play in a 57 lap race here at the 200, Scott? I'm glad you, talk, you asked me that. I mean, this is a physical race. It's a long race. It takes your neck. It takes your Everything on your body, I can remember finishing the 200 and just being whooped, you know. But now training is such a big part of uh, the way these, these riders 
get prepared for this ride. They're riding bicycles, they're riding motocross, they're always doing something to try to stay in shape. And, and this is as good as you're going to get right here. These guys are really physical um, riders. So there you go. I know, Scott, you've spent a lot of time on the bicycle. I've seen you ride with some of these young riders many times. and. I know that is the preferred methodology all over the world right now for motorcycle racers to train, that's for sure. And what a beautiful race we've got going on here. Danny Eslick leading them. He is your pole setter. And, but the fastest lap of the race actually was turned by number 68 at the moment, Luke Stapleford. The rider out of England, he recorded a 151.448. That's the fast lap of the race. But let me tell you something, the top 10 riders are all and almost running the same times. They're all in the 151 fours up to 151 eight, Scott. So they're running good, consistent paces right now here in the early going. Yeah, DeSalvo made a nice move. He's looking around the outside of Essex right there. You know, you can get a good lap time by getting a great drive. Oh, Westby and uh, DeSalvo. DeSalvo had to look over at Westby and said, man, what are you doing? This is already in the race. Well, Westby doesn't care. He took the spot away, muscled his way back by the Triumph rider, moves back in that third spot. Well, if you're, talk if you're talking about Westby and Essex, you're talking about two guys that uh, are they have fun on the motorcycle. They both are very aggressive. They're very showy on the bike, and that's why they're fan favorites. I think they're more uh, more natural type riders than you would say uh, technical riders. Those two riders right there, they just kind of loose at the bike, move around. That's how I like to ride back in the day, and, and I love to see that. You got different type riding styles. Some guys are more mechanical about the way they go about things. These two boys up front, they just let them hang out. Guys in second, third, that's it. Westby, they just kind of loose and let the thing do what it's going to do underneath them. Your race leader right now is uh, the eight machine of Garrett Gerloff on the Yamaha Extended Service Yamaha R6. Gerloff out of Spring, Texas, and he's beginning to put just a little bit of distance on these guys, but the uh, banking in the draft will probably negate uh, much of that. But right now, he does seem to have uh, a little bit of an advantage over these other riders. It's all good. Yeah, Garrett Gerloff, uh, he finished third in AMA Pro Daytona Sport Bike uh, standings last year. Uh, he led uh, 15 total laps, scored five podiums, and finished in the top 10 in all but one start in 2013. You're talking about a consistently good kid. We've got a war up front, a battle to the line. And I mean, we have got, like we documented, you've got about 20 guys uh, that easily could win this race. Most of them are up front in a big pack of race bikes. No doubt, this is, this is a swarm of riders right now, and there's a lot of dicing going on right now. It's very early in this race. I think it's important that these guys, and they will, they'll start to settle down a little bit, but right now, everybody wants their shot to, to lead the Daytona 200 early in this race right now, and that's what you're seeing. So there's a couple of riders that have yet to show their face up front with those likes of Beach and Gagne and Salvo, but they're they're looming right there and they're gonna take their turn at the front at some point, I gotta believe. You're not saying there's any egos under those helmets, are there? Well, I'll be a couple. JD Beach is a guy, he doesn't have much of an ego, but he's got a competitive spirit that just won't quit. Hey, again, if you would like to ask a question of Scott Russell or myself, but I know he's the guy that's gonna answer it because he's the smart guy up here, you just tweet us at AMA Pro SBK, at AMA Pro SBK. Tweet your, tweet your questions to us, tweet your comments, tweet your observation. Look, you're the director of the show, right? You can pick which camera you want to watch on this uh, FanceChoice.tv coverage. You can also be a part of the show. You go ahead and tweet us your questions throughout the course of the 200. We're going to get you directly involved in the Daytona 200. We do not care if you are in London, England, if you're in China, if you're in Japan, if it doesn't matter to us where you are, or anywhere within the borders of the U.S., tweet us at AMA Pro SBK, and the great Scott Russell will answer whatever question you have, as long as it's decent. Here we go, we got a battle going across the start finish line again. Now who's gonna lead it into turn one now? It's a breaking deal between Westby and and Essex right now, looks like uh, Westby's gonna, uh, Essex again, he's hard on the brakes. There's nine riders in this field, the man that just cut the fastest lap, 
Bobby Fong, he's on the tail end of that group. He's man finished on the podium last year, so watch out. He's starting to work his way up to the back of this pack as and they Tom continue to battle up front. And Tomas Puerta, Puerta on the road race factory machine just recorded a 150.264. So the, now, where previously the top five or ten were in the uh, mid 151s, Scott, now the, the uh, top six are all in the uh, mid to upper 150 range, so they're beginning to cut uh, time off these laps. Well, they're taking advantage of the six bikes in front of them. They got Porto just cut a quick lap and then uh, fought the last time. So being on the tail end of that big, long train coming off that banking, man, really makes a difference. It sucks you down into turn one across the big and you go and you get a fast lap time. But that's not what they're thinking right now. They're not worried about lap times. They're worried about position, staying in this lead group right now, staying out of trouble. Um, well, these lead, these lead pack, they're pretty racing pretty darn hard still. And I, I kind of expected that uh, from some of these riders, but, you know, it will settle down at some point. We'll see how this plays out as we make our way through the first first stint of this. After our first pit stop, it'll be interesting because all nine of these teams do their, their job on pit road and will these guys stay together as a pack. We've got our first question coming in from AMA Pro SBK. What is their top speed uh, at during at this point in the race thus far, Scott Russell? I'm sorry, Barry. The question for you is from AMA at AMA Pro SBK. What is their top speed? What is the fastest speed anybody's running right now? Right now, the fastest speed I see on the board is like a 175, 177. Back in the back. Oh, yeah, we've got times jumping all around, and due to that draft, that's where we're at. We're in that 175 range somewhere in there. So. That's how fast these 600s are ripping across here. Yeah, 175, 180. That's impressive here for a middleweight 600cc motorcycle, no question about it. And uh, what a welcome Casey Cotton to the booth. He's not going to talk to you, but he's up. He's part of our great marketing staff. He's the guy that's helping us on the technical side to uh, get your questions uh, to Scott Russell. And we appreciate the, all that Casey does for us here at AMA Pro, and he does a lot. And uh, we'll, we'll try to, we're not going to be able to get to all your questions, but please tweet them in and uh, we'll try to get them. And again, it's at AMA Pro SBK. We've got a race to call and that's our first order of business, but I'm going to run one by you real quick, Scott. Uh, John Venus has uh, sent us a tweet. He says, how much has tire technology, technology, easy for me to say, changed since you won the 200? Well, obviously, uh, it's changed quite a bit. You know, the tires they run now, you know, it's a different class. It's 600 as opposed to 750s when I was on the bikes, and we were running about 10 mile an hour faster than these guys at start finish. So it created different issues with the tires that we had back in the day. Obviously, tire technology in the class uh, since I rode has come so far and allows these ride the riders to run such high mid corner speeds where, you know, they don't seem to be having any problems this year. And, as we had a couple of years ago. Jason DeSalvo goes to the bottom of the race track, track in the draft. The Triumph's rolling here, but there's Eslick once again powering back. Here comes Gerloff, her side by side, and it was a surprise new man that comes to the bottom of the racetrack to make it all happen here. That's how fast things happen in the draft, and just like that, Tomas Puerta, the star out of the road race factory, has come to the head of the field and set a new uh, lap time of 150284. So Tomas Puerta on the road race factory, uh, Yamaha is was at least in the race lead. He still is, but now Eslick is up in there. There's Gerloff number eight. He's in the mix. I, I just don't recall a Daytona 200 in recent times when the riders were this racing, this aggressive, this early. They're working eight of 57 laps, Scott. It looks like the last lap of the 200. This is the biggest race of the series, man. Everybody out there wants to win this. Tomas is riding great right now. He just kind of sat back in that pack, caught up, and then when he saw his opening right there as they come across the start finish line, he was able to draft down on the inside, and he's a hungry young rider. He really wants to win today. All right, let's go with a real quick tweet here at, at AMA Pro Superbike. Scott Russell, do these bikes run any type of ABS or traction control? These bikes do not have traction control on them right here, so they're pretty much it's all rider in this, in this class, which I really like. One more quick one, then we're going to go back to race coverage. Mark Jones, 
He tweets us, the lower line on the banking looks like it has potential. Why are so few riders dropping down low like Westby has been? Well, I mean, if you go down there all by yourself, it's hard to make it work. You know, you got no dancing partner. A lot of these guys, you kind of got to go with the flow. Yeah, it's the shortest way around the racetrack, but when you're racing in a pack like this, you kind of got to go with the flow and, and stay in that draft. So we'll see how that plays out as the race goes on, but typically the line is up high. We're getting the fans involved in the Daytona like 200, Thanks Mr. for the question. Thank you. And they are back to the stripe one more time, coming to the line three, almost four wide. We're going to take a moment here uh, as we approach uh, 10 laps. They're working lap nine and 57. We'll give you a, a little deeper rundown, but all you have to really do is look up at the top of the screen right there, and you will see where everyone's running. You can see their lap times as well here on your screen, thanks to the great job the graphics guys are doing. Hats off down to the production truck. You guys are uh, making it easy for Mr. Russell and I to have fun out here. Look at Gerloff. He, this kid is amazing to me. He's, he's really, really an exacting little artist. He is, and he just got cut up by the Jason DeSalvo right there in that long, in that West End horseshoe. He ran a little bit wide, and uh, Gerloff's going to take that spot away. But Gerloff's hungry. This, is, this could be his breakout year for sure. Got everything going for him, the right team, the right bike, and now he's up leading the Daytona 200. So uh, let's see how he plays this out the rest of the day. But Salvo, he's lingered around in the middle of this pack. He said, man, enough of this. I want to get up front and have some fun too. And, and uh, Eslick's been up in that lead group all race long thus far. Yes, it's early, but uh, we're beginning to see the cream here at the top. And really right now, those, those top four riders have a little distance on fifth and sixth, who have a pretty good little bit of distance, but they're closing it up here as they head into the chicane under hard braking. Well, I'll tell you, Essex, he's the, he's the man to beat on the brakes so far in this race right now. I just, it makes me laugh to watch, watch him how he's riding. He's just, somebody passes him, he's gonna pass him right back. And uh, I, like, I like what he's doing. Uh, real question, this is from Jan. I'm not sure where Jan is, but Jan has a question. What made the choice to go back to the 1000s next year? He says, great coverage, guys. I'm watching you from, I think it was Spain, and it went off my screen. Um, going back to the 1000s for next year, well, that's, that's a, an AMA Pro uh, decision, and I'm sure Daytona International Speedway was a little bit involved in that as well. Uh, I think the correct answer for me to give is the one I believe to be the truth, right? I think the tire technology, they believe, has gotten back to a place where you can actually run this racetrack with a big bore 1,000cc motorcycle for 200 miles uh, safely. And that is a critical element with these big bore motorcycles is being able to go the distance and get the rider home safely. Nobody wants to compromise rider safety. And for all, I believe, worldwide, it's exciting. Real quick note on that, Scott. I wanted to, I've been thinking about this all weekend. You're just the man to ask. Here's my Twitter question. I'm doing it right now. Um, Scott, last year at the end of the year, we saw the Jordan team run with uh, World Superbike on their American Superbike motorcycles with very few changes. Doesn't that say that when the Superbikes come back to the 200, the World Superbike and the British Superbike teams can easily transition their bikes to AMA Pro Superbike spec. I would like to think so. I mean, that's what we should be really be shooting for is, is something more uh, uh, across the board the same as maybe what uh, Australian Superbike, British Superbike, World Superbike run. It'd be nice in that way. You might create some more interest for guys to come over here. But yeah, I think the bikes are close enough. And, and I think they want to create some interest to get this, this sport back to what it was before. We've lost a little bit here. When Giacomo Agostini and when the guys from Europe would come and run with you guys here in America. And fans would get on airplanes to come up here to exactly. see as well. So we're trying to get back to something like that. I think that's real, the, really the motivation behind that going back to Superbike. So they, uh, we promised you a, a, a little bit of a rundown here on the field. Uh, some of you uh, may be listening rather than watching, but right now as they cross the stripe, it is Eslick leading, Garrett Gerloff in the two spot, Bobby Fong third, Dane Westby fourth, Jason desalvo has got his triumph up in the fifth spot, Gagne is sixth, Stapleton is in the seventh spot, J.D. Beach eighth, Tomas Puerta, who has the fastest lap in the race, still 150.2 uh, 
uh, eight four, I believe that is, on that straight camp. Really tell they're close. Uh, is ninth, Jake Lewis, number 85, is 10th, Steve Rapp, 11th, Lake Mosey, Luke Mosey in the 12th spot. Kyle Wyman, who has and still probably does have high hopes of a potential win here in the 200, he's mired back at the 13th spot with Joey Pasquarella, 14th, Jake Zimke, 15th. That's how they're running right now uh, here in the 200 with 11 of uh, 57 laps. There's been a bit of a break in this front pack. And kind of break up and then it goes back to Tomas Porta. So, you know, now the laps start to wind down on in this in this first stint. The tires are starting to wear a little bit. It's probably starting to move around a little bit more. Now it's starting to separate a bit. You led me right into where I want to go. Larry Coleman tweets you. Great coverage, guys. Hey, Scott, with this aggressive early pace, will tire wear be a factor prior to the first pit stop? And I'll follow that, if you will, into the next question. Is Scott Russell, what do you think about how many laps can they go? And we're going to get Danielle, uh, we're going to get Danielle Teal involved in this thing in a little bit. And I think she's going to talk to the Dunlop guys, perhaps. But your thoughts on that? Well, that's a great question, Larry. Thanks for writing in. I think right now this is we're in uncharted territory, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't think a lot of these riders have done long runs throughout practice this weekend. So now we're all out there running in the 150 spot range for. for many laps at a time and you're starting to see the guys who are able to ride the bike as the tire goes off and the guys who are starting to struggle with grip right now and I think that's what you're seeing the separation. Oh my word we just saw an amazing uh, trip across the uh, finish line here and into turn number one it's Eslick, Westby, Gerloff, DeSalvo and Bobby Fong and they are really going at it again I don't remember this much aggression ever in this race in my time of watching it this early, there's Tomas Puerto. We got a good look at the Road Race Factory bike. Gerloff cannot uh, shake anybody here. That uh, 40 bike you saw there, that's Jason DeSalvo running up in the second spot. Nobody's getting away on, on this particular uh, section of the race. Yeah, no, it's, it's just kind of tight. But like you said, it's just starting to break up the front pack a little bit. But what I don't see in the way these rider, riders are riding the bike, and obviously there's a reason for it. I don't see. A lot of the riders picking the bike up really quick on the edge of the corner to try to get it off the edge of the tire to get on that meaty part of the tire and actually try to conserve the tire. Obviously Dunlop's giving them a good product. They're still running great lap time. They have to leave the bike a bit leaned over more and I, don't, I just don't see any of the riders picking it up real quick. They're just kind of letting these 600 drift out and so obviously Dunlop's done a great job in giving them a tire that's going to last. No question about it. Gerloff's trusting his. Uh, you can just see him bending them over there. It looks to be like the, the pace of the race has not slowed one bit. Uh, they're down now. They've moved down from about the top seven or eight of that were averaging in the 150.8 range. Now they're averaging in the 150.4, 150.5. So really, no one is slowing their pace one bit here, even though they've got 12 laps on these Dunlops. And again, they come across the stripe nearly four wide, then they break up into two rows of two, and it continues to be quite a dogfight. Nobody's really dropping off of that six rider pack. Uh, it's still Westby and uh, Eslick, Gerloff, and DeSalvo. Couple of spots back to Bobby Fong and Jake Gagne. Uh, looking for J.D. Beach, who's trying to close that little gap up and get up in the mix here too, but there's Eslick. Uh, Eslick's not really being the showboat that he customarily is. What's really? that fist bump? I don't know, Barry. Just <laughs> as you said that, he's waving at his pit board guy. That, that infield straightaway. All his buddies are over there camped out on the back That's straightaway. That's what I bet I know it is, who they are. Sure. And he's actually saying hey to them while he's leaving the Daytona 200. <laughs> Reminds me of myself a lot, thanks. But he is uh, really riding the wheels off this Trump. And he, we're only halfway through this first stint, so it's going to be interesting to see if the tires start to drop off a little bit more because we still have quite a bit of racing to go on this set of tires right now. And you can see Essex looking for grip as he goes up on the bank right there. That's uh, the double zeros of Dane Westby running in the two spot. The Triumph, uh, Castrol Triumph number 40 of Jason DeSalvo running in the three spot as they climb, go down the hill uh, in the banking. Yeah, you can see Essex dove down pretty quickly off that turn right there. Not sure what he was doing, just kind of trying to test the waters on the down low. Not sure, but he lost two positions in doing that. Here's a question for you, Scott, from Dankston, who uh, tweets us here at AMA Pro SBK. Hey, guys, Triumph 675 is really bad fast this year. Can you elaborate on the engine difference between the 675 and the inline fours? That might be tough. 
I'm told it's a very tractable engine, it's lighter weight, and it's smooth. Well, and not to mention it's a narrow engine, so it's going to be just less drag as far as they go down the straightaway. If you look at the front area of the motorcycle, the, the, the trunk's very narrow. So, you know, as far as riding a bike, the trunk's going to get, it's got a good punch off the corner, and it's a very rideable machine. So there's a, quite a bit of difference between uh, uh, that and that. We got a good look at the Yamaha uh, Yamalu paint livery on that machine. I don't know about you, but I think that's good looking as they all are. There's a good close up look at the Yamaha extended service machine of Gerloff's. These machines are beautiful this year. Having, having uh, been down close and personal with these bikes, it's a thrill. If you haven't been to an AMA Pro Road Race, go ahead and go to amaproracing.com. Uh, click on road race, then click on schedule, pick yourself out two or three races to come through this year. Buy a ticket, gas up your motorcycle, come on. Nestle keeps waving. He waved at, at his uh, group over there again. He's saying hi to the fans all around this racetrack. That is just like you. Yeah, that was the same deal. I mean, it's uh, you get in the zone and you're comfortable with the motorcycle and you just feel like, hey, you can't do any wrong. And that's Danny Aston. I love that. He's kind of a throwback and just a, a, all smiles, always enjoying himself. But he's getting drafted right now as we speak on that back shoot. But I got to talk. Oh, there's oh, Tomas. Tomas Huerta is pushing his Red Bull, his uh, Road Race Factory Red Bull Yamaha. That's a heartbreaker for Danny Walker and the entire team who've worked so hard. They've got new paint this year, too. And there he is. What a fine young man that he is. I know it must be frustrating. What's he doing? They would pick him up at a track truck and think he's trying to push it back a pit lane. No, no, he's got a long way to go. He does. Uh, he's over there in NASCAR too, I think. But, Goodness. You know, I want to talk, this This is a five bike battle right here, but Bobby Fong, don't forget, he's the sixth man up back there just off the tail end of this group. Done a great job to, to catch this group and try to hang on right now. And he'll try to make up a bunch of ground on the brakes right here and get back up on the wheels of these guys. And there he comes in the shot. But uh, right now, the two Oklahoma boys have done most of the leading here today. Hey, Mike Springer asked you, is there a bump out of the back chicane that causes everybody to wheelie? Or is it just that uh, where the thing is just right and hooking up coming out of there? Well, when you're, you're transitioning from the right to the left, and yes, there's a bit of a kicker bump right there, and that's what you see lifting the rear wheel, not to mention the suspension. It's loaded, unloaded as they come across the top and applying the throttle. That makes the bike want to wheelie. I don't know the answer to this one, but I like the question who, this is from Jake's NASCAR, who is the youngest rider in Daytona 200 history. Perhaps we could work on that and to find out for you. I'd like to know that myself. Good question. Good question. <laughs> oh, the youngest winner, I'm sorry, the youngest winner in Daytona 200 history from Jake's NASCAR. We appreciate that question. We'll try to get that for you. I'd like to welcome any and all NASCAR fans that are joining us here at Daytona for our live flag to flag coverage of the Daytona 200. We are very much hoping to see you here at fanschoice.tv. We've got a little blue flag action going on here as we're lapping up through uh, some of the back markers. And it's tough for those guys too, you know, they're just trying to do that. I think it's Ricky Orlando right there in that cow that kind of got swarmed up by that lead pack right there. And that, that, uh, Slowed, slowed down Westby, it looked like a little bit, but nevertheless didn't lose the draft. Bobby Fong's back there. He has lost the draft, but you'll watch him as they get to turn one. Now they're fanning out, so he's able to catch it like a big bike draft as he comes from the back. He'll make a lot of that up on the brakes. As my announcing partner on the flat track side, uh, Scotty Dubler would say, when you see that when you see that blue flag, it means there's a race going on up front and you're not in it. Here's a replay of that pass. Scotty just peeled off the banking in the draft, did Gerloff. Oh yeah, you, it's that slingshot effect. You're up high, you got a great toe off of three motorcycles in front of you. Anytime he just dipped out of there and it just slingshots you down that straightaway. Man, I appreciate the guys down in the truck doing such a great job oh, yeah. delivering a package for us here to talk about, show these fans at home. We were just getting, we were talking to our some of our maybe NASCAR folks that are tuning in. That blue flag is a layover flag. And what it's telling is the uh, back markers is there is a race going on up front. You are not in it. And the, one of the things Dave McGrath, the road race director, always tells the guys in the riders meeting is if you're if you're a back marker and you and some other guys are racing for position, be kind to one another. 
Don't take advantage of the blue flag. Pull over in the position you're running. Let the leaders go by, then resume your race. Don't try to slip around the guy in front of you during the process of moving over for the leaders. Now, not many guys probably want to adhere to that policy, but it's a good one. Well, I threw it out there anyway, if anybody cares. So <laughs> it's, it's tough, you know, when you're when you're racing, you're racing. But yeah, it's hard sometimes. He's got to see the blue flag and time and whatnot. And it can, it causes uh, some chaos, but nevertheless, everybody's cleaning through, and now that whole pack of uh, six riders is back together. Bobby's done a great job on the back end of that to, to fight back. He keeps losing a little bit up on here on the banking, but now he's close enough to get that toe off the five bikes in front of him. That is a nose-to-tail draft, and then they fan out. That's how it works right there. Gerloff, uh, is, are they already strategizing for the last lap? I mean, are they sizing each other up, or are they just out there wanting to lead every lap? If That's what it looks if like. If they're smart, they are, you know. And they, you would be, right, yeah, strategizing? You, you, you look at everybody and you think, well, I, I can do this, I hear, I can do that here. And this guy's strong. And, and so, yeah, you should be thinking about that the whole race through. Live flag to flag coverage of the 73rd running of the Daytona 200. We've got us a beautiful day going on right now. You got to think the riders discount folks are uh, pretty happy to see uh, Danny Eslick doing the kind of job he's doing on that bike. You know, they've, they've had two or three different riders on that machine. They've certainly had some mechanical issues along the way, but they've hung in there and persevered. And right now they may get paid back here if all could go well on that bike all the way to the end. I could pick the right rider this year. They got Danny on there, and he uh, built to ride this thing. It looks like he, he looks like he's just playing out there. To be honest with you, all these guys look really comfortable. To be honest, this, this league group all ride within themselves, and uh, they're all keeping it really clean to, to be such hectic racing. To be honest, so it, I'm happy to see how they're doing. That. A triple A triple X stranger has sent us a text. Will there be any pit stops during this race? Yes, sir. There will likely be two for every team here. Uh, during the running of this race. I believe in the next two laps is going to start opening that window between lap 19 and 22 typically is when you're going to start seeing that. And uh, oh, we got oh, an early pack. Hey, there's your question answered. There it is. There's an answer to your question as uh, Gerloff will peel off of the banking and head down into the pit lane. And that was Westby as well. It's so critical that they do that properly. And there's a pit road speed limit now. So they got to be very careful as they come into the pit this first time. I believe it's 50 miles an hour at every round. I'm pretty sure it's 50 miles an hour uh, at every round of AMA Pro Racing. And it's radar gun checked at both ends of the racetrack. So Gerloff down and away. The uh, Yamaha Extended Service Monster Energy guys got him out quickly. Well, he and uh, Westby came in together, but they're definitely not leaving together. So that means Westby must have had a glitch in his pit stop there. But that's key, you know, for, for the teams to do their job. And, and Gerloff exact did his job perfectly um, and handed, over, handed the bike to the team. And they did a great job. He has to get off the motorcycle, turn the engine off as they do their work on that motorcycle, and climb back on it and get refired and take off. And did a great job of that. And uh, as far as Westy goes, I, I kind of lost him on pit road. I'm not sure what happened. And then the access road coming out of the pit area, it kind of runs parallel with the uh, uh, with the uh, racetrack, so it takes a hard left, goes all the way down near the International Horseshoe, and that's where you find your blend line where they can rejoin the battle. You come out of there on cold tires, you got to tiptoe a little bit, don't you? Now, around right, that you access I was going to touch on they're not cold, they've been on warmers, but they're still new. And, and, and back in the old days, we would do a lap in practice in the morning warm up to scuff every set of tires I had. And I don't know if they play the game like that anymore. These tires are so good now, and I think they just leave them new come out they've got to be careful when they come out of the pit they are working it here pit stops have pit stops have uh, begun to cycle through uh, I'm gonna answer Andy Chadwell's question here on Twitter uh, he asked Scott Russell do you think the AMA will ever bring back larger displacement bikes to the 200 and Andy happy to report yes uh, after a decade of running the middleweight 600s, 
The uh, Big Moore 1000s will be back for 2015 Daytona 200. Thank you for your question, Andy. We appreciate that. Well, you got Essex still leading the way here, Barry. You got Jake Gagne. You see that little foot off? That's yeah. letting the guys with the pit board, letting them know that he sees that I got to pit this next lap. So he knows he saw the pit board. Team's ready for him when they come around. That Road Race Factory Red Bull team, they're going to try to get Jake Gagne in and out of that pit as quick as they can. He's running his second. And uh, he's, uh, he's flying the company colors now because apparently uh, number 12, their other rider, Tomas Puerta, is out of it here. So the 32 of Jake Gagne, recognizable by the big Red Bull emblem on the side of the machine, he's prepping apparently to make that uh, left-hand corner out of NASCAR 4 and come down pit lane. There's Blake Young, number 79. Let's see, where's Blake Young running on this thing? Don't see Blake up. Now there he is. Blake is running 16th at the moment for you Blake Young fans. Man, it's, uh, it's a turn of events here as they begin to cycle through their pit stops. It's gonna take a little while. Here comes Gagne, you see him dropping down a little bit low. We saw that leg come off. I just assume he's gonna pit this lap. Yes. Yep, here he comes. He put that right leg out. He makes the cut, the left-hand corner. He slows to the 50 mile an hour speed limit. Uh, stop and go is uh, awaits you if you uh, exceed. So it's very, very important. Mostly they, they usually set the rev limiter in a certain gear, right, to indicate to the rider. So he can hold it pretty much wide open. Or they'll put a mark on it. Yeah, they have pit loads, uh, speed limiters on these things, I think. And, or otherwise, we used to put a, a little mark on the tack. And if you put it in second gear and ran 5,000 RPM, whatever right. it was, you knew you were good. You're going you're gonna to get assessed a penalty uh, at their discretion of what that penalty is. Well, yeah, nice stop for those guys. That was, that was smooth. Jake's back on it and taking off. That was a great stop. It takes my dealership uh, half a day to put a tire on my Kimco 300. They just did it in about 10 seconds. And there is number 69, Danny Eslick, still leading here. He's, uh, and Gagne just has set the fastest lap of the race, but that was a while uh, back before he got fresh rubber, 150.253 uh, for Gagne. So he owns the fastest lap of the race, but he had slowed to, well, of course, his last lap was 159 because he had He's slow to come down the pit lane. Well, it looks like Danny's stretching it longer than anybody out there out of this league group. He's 20 laps on these tires right now as we go into this lap. He is uh, waiting another rider wants the blue flag wave. Get this, get this guy out of the way. But it looks to me like the Triumph's easier on the tires possibly because he's still able to run these fast lap times. Felt like, hey, let's stretch this thing out to 22. If you do that in your second stop, that leaves you with a better tire on that last stint to make the run of the checkered flag. Gotcha, you can break this thing up. You, the later you pit the first time, it means the later you pit the second time, which leaves less lappage to conclude the 57 laps at the end. Here so comes. here comes our race leader, Danny Eslick, brings the riders discount triumph down the pit lane. Perhaps we can keep the, uh, maybe they'll keep these cameras on this thing. Eslick still waving at people saying hello. Here comes Danny Eslick on the Riders Discount Triumph as he is coming into the attention of the Riders Discount team. Here comes Danny. He'll smoothly bring that thing right on the stops, hits his marks, it goes up on the jack stands. By AMA Pro rules, he has to get off the motorcycle for refueling. He cannot stay. You can see his water bottle is attached to the fuel can. Boom, he funnels in some liquid. They get him his fuel down the way. Nice stop by the Triumph right? Triumph try team, that was great. Danny had a little trouble getting off the bike. It gets kind of hectic right there. He finally found his water bottle. You want to drink a water, I can tell you. I used to get caught in mouth about like lap five. I'd be, I'd ride with my mouth open. It's like, I got to get water. So uh, now leading the race, it looks like Westby might be our race leader. I, I look so. up on the board right there. Double zero, Dave Westby leading. And, uh, and uh, so real quick, in case we're watching, you guys are watching Pit Stop while Scotty and I are talking about something else. You'll notice during the pit stops, there's a few things happen. The riders have to get off of the motorcycle. There has to be a crew member with a uh, fire extinguisher standing at the ready. There could be no electrics plugged in to uh, anything on the motorcycle. So no electrics. We've got to have our uh, our uh, flame suits on. Uh, the, the person fueling has to have face protection. 
they're uh, all good on that. So it's just some of the procedures involved in re refueling. Wow, that was exciting stuff. Danny Asik had a great pit, came right out of the pit, right with Jake Gagne and the race leader, Dame Westby. He passed Westby, Westby doesn't have any of it. Westby drops down to the low line of the golf NASCAR turn four. Oh, this is good stuff right here, Scott. We're 21 of 57 laps. So a rider in the way, how are they gonna negotiate this? They all, two of them get by. Gagne's got to hold his breath and he's got to wait. Oh, Gagne is going to get stuck here for just a moment in a slow part of the racetrack. He made his move, but it held him up about four or five uh, links there on the group. Perhaps he can make it up here on the bank. That's when you want to see the blue flag. We kind of missed that right there, but that's the way it goes sometimes. You know, you got to be patient. Jake still has a long race to go. He's still in touch with the leaders. He'll have to make a lot of that ground he lost up on the brace. But this is a beautiful thing. Look at Jason DeSalvo, the man in fourth. So all of our guys, our lead packs, are all back together again. We may have lost Bong in that deal. I have to look back here and see. But what a great pit stop by all four of these teams to be back together like that. And that's exactly what we want as a race. That's exactly what the teams want to do, and the riders got to be happy. Bobby Fong's in there. Uh, according to Tommy, okay. story, he crossed the strike just Both after uh, Jason DeSalvo. So he is definitely in the hunt, as is Jake Lewis and J.D. Beach running in the sixth and seventh spot. Now we should see some lap times slip down a little bit lower here. They're on fresh tires. Give them a couple of laps to get them. The uh, mold release rubbed off of them. Get them scuffed in. Get them fully up to temp. DeSalvo owns the fastest lap of the race on the Triumph right now. 149.973. He is the only rider to get in the sub-150 range. Nice. That is Jason DeSalvo of the number 40 machine. Eslick with uh, a little bit of a, a wag of the tail there under braking and downshifting. But that's all good. That's just part of uh, riding that's these middle weight loose. 600s. Letting the thing do what it does underneath you, and that's where they're most comfortable. A guy like Danny and a guy like uh, Dane right here just to continue to battle out front. Here's a Twitter person I'm guessing is probably British. Uh, at Thruxton Racer is his thing. It's Mark Michon. He said, it's really great watching Triumphs at the sharp end of proceedings while enjoying a cup of tea. We're glad you are. We wish you were having your tea here at Daytona. Well, we're so happy to have Triumph in this sport. They've invested so much in this sport. It, it's such a big effort. It's going to help the sport of road racing in America. And so uh, we're happy to have them out here. We're glad you're enjoying your tea. Uh, well, a question uh, from one of our Twitter followers. What are the differences? This is from James Davidson. No relation to uh, Harley Davidson. What are the differences between these bikes and a 600 or a 675 off the showroom floor? Well, there's they're allowed quite a bit of modifications in GoPro Daytona Sport Bike. In your Super, in your super Sport, uh, they are not allowed are almost no modification. They're, the bodywork has changed. Uh, for, to racing bodywork that appears factory, uh, but mostly everything on a super sport bike is the same. There's some differences in electronics, there's differences in tires, uh, some internal, I think, some performance mods on the engines. I know it's a vague answer because I don't really know the actual truth of the whole thing. I think the stacks can be longer on the, the, the DSB class, the links can be changed on the rear suspension. Um, maybe a little bit of mild in engine work, telemetry can be added to the bike. So that's kind of it, really. I mean, you're seeing uh, you're seeing bikes that aren't that far away from what you can go buy. But that's the point. You can go down to your dealership and buy one just like it. And uh, as far as the average rider skill sets, uh, you couldn't do any more with one of these race bikes than you could do with one of these bikes off the showroom floor. Believe me, they're better than all of us. Um, this is a great question. This is um, Scott Bolton. Hey, Mr. D, was there, I'm, I'm thinking he's talking to you. Was there one part of the 200 you found to be mentally tougher than the rest of the race? Well, I mean, it, I, I guess near the end, you know, when you're, when you're kind of zapped physically, you know, depending on how well your motorcycle's working up on the bank. And if you had a bike, if I had a bank bike that was comfortable to ride on the bank, and then, and my life was a lot easier if I have one that's a little bit off. So obviously, it's at the end of this 200 mile when uh, when you're starting to get a little bit tired. That's the kind of the first thing that goes is your brain, you know, when you're doing this sport. So that, if I had to say anything, then that would be it. The end of the race. Well, here we are with uh, almost 100 miles in as we approach half distance here, uh, and we've still got Westby, Eslick, Salvo, and Gagne 
glued together here at the top of the order right now. It is a four-rider battle up front that is a barn burner of a race. They're going to swap the position around, but the colors of the Riders Discount Prime are clearly out in front with the triumph of Jason DeSalvo in the two spot. So right now we've got Triumph running one, two. Um, well, Westby is actually uh, up front, according to, well, I think that's uh, you're what it right. was when Those they were tied right. Those and Salva, and you got the two Yamaha guys right behind them. But it's flip flops every lap nearly. But. Well, that's what happened. I looked up at the monitor after watching the screen, and it was uh, when they crossed the stripe, it was different. But now it is, again, the 69 of Eslick back out front. Well, unfortunately for uh, Bobby Fong, who was running right in that very pack that made that first pit stop, has lost touch with this three group. You can see them, and you can see Bobby exiting the, the infield just back in the distance. So he's some probably four or five seconds back. It'll be interesting to see. He's running the same lap time as the leader, but will he be able to get back in contact with these guys? They're set the blaze in place. One of our, uh, several of our AMA Pro uh, champions, including Scott Russell, went on to win world championships. Nicky Hayden did it in, uh, in MotoGP in 06. He runs number 69. He did that because that was his dad's number, Earl, and Earl chose that number because he said it looked the same upside down as it did right side up, and that's how he spent half his racing career. So that's how Nicky Hayden got to be number 69, in case you wonder. Ooh, that was tight. Well, yes, it looked up on the outside of the double zero of Westby as they went off in NASCAR 4, and all he saw was that white wall come up quick. He had to get out of the crawl and then turn. DeSalvo made the move and took that second spot over. Kanye's playing it nice. He's just sitting back there watching. He ain't getting up in there trying to scrap with these guys. He knows this is a long way to go still in this race. You know, that's a good observation. He's saving the machine. He's saving tires. He's not stressing anything, including himself probably. He's back there. And plus, Scott, doesn't that give him an opportunity to really size up? where these guys are strong and where these guys are weak in front of them. Not that any of them are weak anywhere right now, but where he might find a little bit of an edge somewhere at the end. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's nothing better than to sit there and size everybody up. And when you're sitting in there comfortably, you know, you're actually letting Eslick push the wind off the corner. You're using the tire less, and uh, it's just saving the equipment and going to school. Well, I feel you know, this is a good sign. I'm sure he's probably not on the lead lap, but number 12, I think I just saw Tomas Puerta back out on the racetrack, so at least he's getting some good seat time here at Daytona, even if he's not on the lead lap. Yeah, I mean, he wants to get back up on this group and see if he can stay and keep pace with him, and that'll, that'll do his confidence uh, uh, lots of good, although he's already lost touch. He can't come out of the pits. These guys are full bore at it, and he's already losing touch with those guys. And he's probably many laps down anyway. He walked halfway around the racetrack with his motorcycle as we watch him walking through the chicane here. There's that little wheelie that uh, our Twitter followers were talking about. It's got answered. It's so tight that you come out of there. You know, they, you want to keep the bike as straight as you can so you can accelerate. It's, it's a real straight run, but you're almost jumping the grass every, every time. We don't get, we're not seeing that as close on TV, but these guys are nearly in the dirt every time they wheel across the edge of that pavement. You know, and I think I get all the historical aspect of the middleweight cruisers, uh, middleweight uh, sport bikes versus the uh, big boars like next year, but I don't know what really, as a spectator, I don't know what difference it makes. As, as long as they're all running up front and competitive like that, you're seeing a good race either way. I get the allure of the uh, big four bikes and why that is a popular decision. I understand it. I support it. But I, I think as long as you're watching a good race, in reality, it doesn't matter what they are. I can agree. I mean, this is a great race right here. This is uh, something that produces great racing and has done for many years in the, in the DSB class. And, uh, Today we're seeing nothing different. Super bikes are different. They're harder to ride. They're harder to get the most out of. So it separates a lot of riders. But you know that's the that's the top stuff we got in America, and people want to see it. Watching a good one here. 25 of 57 laps now in the record book. And uh, we've got, we'll soon have a 
report from down on the pit lane from our Danielle Till here in just a couple of moments. That is the Riders Discount Triumph right there, number 69, Danny Essling, very much in control of this thing right now, as he kind of has been all race long. There have been several different people in the race lead, but overall it has been Essling uh, who has been the most dominant player uh, even though the fastest lap of the race belongs to DeSalvo at 140.973. And Dane Westby, he's got a good lap going here right now. But they all do. They're in a nice, tight little race. You know, they're, they're having fun. As Scott Russell said, they're, they're learning. They're going to school off one another. There's DeSalvo on the outside of Westby. Westby to the low side of DeSalvo. Got to put DeSalvo back into the three spot. And I really am anxious to do this. Let's uh, go down trackside and check in with Danielle Teal from the hot pit. Danielle. Thank you, Barry. I'm here with the number eight crew chief, Oliver Huffington. Oliver, you guys had seamless pit stops, but followed up with a crash from Garrett. How do we recover here? Well, we just have to do the best we can. I mean, I think 11's doable, um, but uh, yeah, it's just unfortunate. That's just the way it goes sometimes. I mean, hopefully JD can pull his way back into a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's disappointing for sure. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you so much, Danielle Teal. Getting the thoughts of Oliver Hutchins. He's with the uh, uh, Yamaha Extended Service Monster Energy Grapes Yamaha team. And we're looking at him up on the banking here right now. As the, again, they look like art. Some of the guys choosing to run a much lower line, some high. The danger here is if a couple of guys can't get together. We've seen that happen before. There is a danger of that happening, isn't there? Yeah, but these helmets that they wear now allows them to have that good peripheral vision that you'll need to see the rider next to you. And they've raced enough now with each other that I think they're kind of comfortable with running real close. Obviously, they are. Nobody's gotten kind of doing anything crazy. So, uh, But, yeah, when you run that low line, it uh, kind of can bring you together as you come off the NASCAR 4 or, or, uh, or 2. You know, this is really cool. I mean, these four guys, if they can stay together, uh, right down to the checkered flag here at Daytona, the Sunoco checkered flag at the 57 um, lap 200 mile mark. We could really see a shootout because Dane Westby and Danny Eslick, as you alluded to earlier, they're both kind of cowboys. I mean, they, let's face it, they have too much fun out there and they are very highly competitive. You got Jason DeSalvo, he's the completely different antithesis of those guys. He's like, he's real quiet, really. He's more conservative in his approach to things. And then Jake Gagne, uh, out of the Road Race Factory, another guy that I think of as a little more conservative, too. So we've got the makings of a great finish here at Daytona for the uh, Daytona 200. Getting our photograph taken uh, at the moment. Don't pardon us. We're not announcing a race or anything. <laughs> Here in the tower, it is kind of informal, though. And you know, some of you may have, here. some of you may have just found out about our fans' uh, choice TV and joined us late. This is live flag to flag coverage of the 73rd running of the Daytona 200. I'm Barry Boone. I'll be your host with Scott Russell, a five-time winner of this race. And um, our Danielle Teal is covering pit lane. And speaking of, let's go down trackside to Danielle Teal. I've caught up, caught up with Sebastian Manconi of Dunlop. Sebastian, obviously tires are a big issue when it comes to a race like this, an endurance race. It's hot out there. What are you guys telling people or suggesting to people to do to maintain their tires throughout this race? Tire pressure is very important. So and stick with our recommendation. So, you know, scoop your tires, pressure, tire warmers. So, so far we're having a good race, so everything's working pretty good for us. Now, obviously, it's warming up. There's very little cloud coverage. What's the general consensus? We know Dunlop puts out a great tire. What's everybody's feeling overall on the weekend tire choice? Um, the tire choice is it's US front, US rear, so it's very good. We saw 149s done by Justin DeSalvo, so. So it's looking very good for us. I mean, these Dunlop guys, I've been through it in Daytona, man. I remember back in the day when we had tire issues and David Watkins flying back to England to build a tire in, in one week and bringing it back, and, allow, and I was able to win that race. But these spec tires, they've done a great job. I had issues after the first 
repavement of the, of the banking one year. They've sorted it out. And like you said, as long as they keep the tire pressures within what their range is, the tire warmers, they like to hit. You heard him say that they wanted the riders to scuff the tires. So all those things, if everybody does what the Dunlop guys say, they shouldn't have any problem. These, these leaders can go at it for 200 miles right here, just like they are. Well, maybe one of the biggest things that he said, I believe, in the, of importance is to stay within the recommended pressures that they give you. They know their tire. They know their sidewall strength. They know uh, what the compound's going to do under various heat situations and pressures. Very important to, to stay with what they recommend. Well, uh, you know, it's happened in the past that uh, some of the, you know, crew chiefs decide to be cowboys and try different tire pressures and go out of the range, and then you can get into tire trouble. So, obviously, these guys build the tires. They know what they work, what temperatures they work, what pressure. So, um, so far, it looks like everybody's following the plan. I love this question from Heavy E Racing at Heavy E Racing uh, to Scott Russell. What do you think, Gary? I mean, I realize you're never going to know the answer to this, really, but what do you think Gary Nixon would think of Danny's ride here today on the Triumph? Oh, he'd be proud of Danny. He loved Danny. You know he did. And, uh, who, 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 who isn't proud of what we're seeing right here off at Essex, uh, coming off the Superbike season that he had? Not a great year. Uh, we knew Danny's uh, potential as a rider, and sometimes it's hard to show in Superbike. So I'm sure he's smiling, down, smiling up there, looking down at his boy, leading this Daytona 200 and riding so well. Yeah, DeSalvo, uh, when they celebrated the anniversary of the Triumph, uh, he had his livery all painted up in uh, Gary Nixon colors, number nine. Oh, Gary's still around uh, in our hearts for sure. Uh, up at Mid Ohio, we used to all of uh, the Owensboro bunch would all hang over the fence with him and uh, look out over the fence. And Gary would always hang out there uh, and uh, enjoy the races. He was he made a pretty good spectator. You know, most guys don't make good spectators. Oh, yeah, I mean, he loved being out here at the races. I mean, he was an icon, and we miss him so much seeing him at all these rounds, I mean, for so long. Um, he, he, was a, he was always here and just enjoying himself. Great, great guy to have cruising around the pack and, and uh, a legend in our sport. Yep, yep, he was quite the character, too. You talk about a colorful individual. <laughs> he enjoyed himself. He enjoyed himself that. a lot. Let's, uh, let's go down quickly to the hot pit lane to Danielle. Thank you, I'm with Gary Dean, crew chief of the number 85, Jake Lewis of Motorsport, me and Yamaha. You had a great pit stop with Jake, but unfortunately your second rider, number 97, Tucker Lancaster, has called it a race. Can you tell us what happened? Yeah, he said he was up on the banking and he felt like he couldn't drive, like there was no power. And so he came in, we looked at it, we didn't see nothing wrong. We tried him to try a few things. He went out there, but unfortunately something happened in the bike and we had to retire from the race. Unfortunate ending for the Mii Motorsports team. As much time and as much money, as much energy, as much talent that it takes to get a bike in this grid and then to have to retire early, it is a heartbreaker, no question. I'll tell you what, look at that. He's is he kicking, playing? He's kicking that thing like a horse. Yeah, like, like a, a horse. Bull. Yeah, he, He's, he's having fun, and, that, and that's what you want. I mean, you want a loose rider having fun. That means that he's riding so well within himself and what he's doing. And there <laughs> might be more in the back. You know, he's just, <laughs> I tell you, if it comes down to a real scrap, he's going to be the guy to beat um, when it gets rough in the infield. Westy's ready to touch swing with him. I tell you, the double zero, he's been going at it all race long with Danny. So, okay, and, um, and all it's four of those. It's going to be fun to watch this play out. DeSalvo and Gagne are ready to wrestle at the end, too, but. Is it a little bit potentially a mind game fun thing? I mean, here you are, you got your head down, you're riding your tail off, you're trying to do the best lap times you can do lap after lap, and the guy leading the race in front of you is kicking his motorcycle like you're kicking a horse with your spurs, and he's playing, he's waving at the fans. I think he's playing a mind game as much as having fun, do you? Oh, yeah, I mean, he's just letting him know that this is no big deal to him right now. This Look at is, that, that's it's just, He's having fun, man, and, and, and so, but you know, doesn't seem like he can get away from these guys as much fun as they're all having. They're running fast, and I don't know how much is left in the tank for these guys. I don't, I don't see any of these guys being able to make a break from, from any of the four. The only way I see something happening would maybe be um, a light rider getting in the way, coming to the end, or something to break this group up. If they can keep it clean, and no mistakes, We're you know, good pit, one more good pit stop, we could see the same thing all the way to the finish. Well, that is true, and that is a. Uh, 
the smallest word in the English language, uh, or one of the smallest, is uh, if. And it's also a very big word right now because if they can all four survive with good, clean pit stops because it, uh, any one of them could uh, have an issue on the hot pit lane that could get them out of this lead group and they could get in a deficit they couldn't dig out of. So we'll see how that works out. But there's uh, the Riders Discount Triumph. Danny Eslick running in the uh, number one spot. The double zeros, the Yamaloop Westby Racing Yamaha of Dane Westby. So you've got a Triumph leading. You've got a Yamaha in the two spot. Then Jason DeSalvo on the Castrol Triumph Sport Bike Track Time uh, Triumph in the three spot. And Gagne on the Yamaha in four. So uh, good parity going on here at the front. Triumph Yamaha, Triumph Yamaha. And then the 50 machine of Bobby Fong on the Daytona 675. You think they're not enjoying their coverage down there? There they are. They're all saying, hey, yeah, bring it. We like this fans choice TV thing here in the uh, hot pit lane. And of course, Pat Gonsalves and uh, Rich Chambers doing a great job on the public address system here at Daytona International Speedway. But we are tasked with bringing you live flag to flag coverage all around the world here at FansChoice.tv. You can see Westby running that low line as he comes around the bank and he's searching for the draft off that slower rider and that's exactly what he got. Hey, let's let's take a question from Brian Crumpacker from uh, California. He says, hey Scott, Brian from California, what is the best corner, and I might add corners to Brian's question if I may have a little creative license, Brian, I'm gonna uh, go ahead a little deeper with your question. What is the best corner or corners to make a pass on here at Daytona? Well, obviously, I think in the, in the turn one, it's been a popular place. We've seen a lot of action there. And in the, in the, the more in the first, first horse here, you're going to see a lot of, that's a great place to pass. It's, it's not too high speed of an entry. So you can dive down the inside of somebody and make it work. Um, again, another spot is coming into the second horse here. We haven't seen a lot of passing right here. So those are really my spot, turn one and the international horseshoe. Hey, let's uh, quickly go. Thank you for answering Brad's That's question, right. sir. Let's go down trackside to Danielle. I'm here with crew chief of Dan Westby, Chuck Giacchetto, the double zeros here this season. Chuck, you guys look new, fresh, improved. Dane has a whole new air about him, and things are seeming to reflect so in the race. I think so. The uh, Yamaloop Westby Racing R6 is rocking and rolling. Our crew chief, Jerry Daggett, built us a, an absolutely beautiful bike. The guys at Yamaha and Yamaloop got behind us, uh, you know, all of them. You know, you can tell we got the slickest oil in the paddock. Uh, really glad to see you guys out here. Thanks to the AMA. Thanks for you for being here. And, uh, man, I, I can't say enough right now. I'm, I'm definitely a little nervous. Definitely don't want to start getting too comfortable yet. But uh, the guys are burning it down. It's a great race pace. And, um, I don't know, there's not much left to say. I, I'll, I'll see you guys in another 20 laps. Thanks an awful lot. Hey, that's very cool, Danielle. Thank you. And Chuck, uh, he might get the uh, best marketing line of the race. He said, we got the slickest oil in the paddock. I like that. That's cool. Talking about Yamaloop, of course. Hey, I got to give a shout out to Greg White. Thanks for chiming in, Greg. Apparently, the youngest winner of the Daytona 200 is Josh Heron. Uh, Greg, Greg's got all those stats. Thanks for tweet me over here or text me and let me know that. Appreciate that to answer the question from earlier. Well, yeah, Greg's Garage. Who doesn't love that? That's good stuff. And be sure to check out Greg's Garage. Hello, Greg White. There's DeSalvo working it here at Daytona. These guys are going at it again uh, very aggressively all race long, every lap of the race. They're working 34 of 57. Yeah, it's just solid from all four of these riders up front. I mean, they're just a couple of, you know, they're changing the lead, but they've kind of calmed down a little bit. Most of the two Oklahoma boys like, can't decide on who wants to lead it. The Salvo and Gagne seem content to sit kind of back in the third and fourth spot and let those guys push to win, which I think is kind of smart. And, and you know, they're, they're watching, learning the whole time, and, and they'll, they'll strike at the end when it, when it comes time. Oh, man, I'm loving this Twitter thing, guys. Keep it coming. We're... We're getting a chuckle out of a lot of you. And, uh, we love all the feedback we're getting from our fans. Thank you so much. 
I sort of got a compliment, I think, a minute ago, but it's sort of a left-handed one. But we'll take anything uh, at this sport. We'll take all the compliments we can get, even if they're weird. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's really a cool deal. Uh, we're, we're thankful to be involved in this ground floor, groundbreaking digital platform. Uh, the, the fans getting to choose which camera angle they want to view each race from. This is not a one-race deal uh, from Daytona International Speedway this weekend. This is going to be an all-season long thing. It's not just AMA Pro Road Racing. It's also uh, AMA Pro Grand National Flat Track, uh, America's sport, the oldest form of motorcycle racing really in America. And uh, that's uh, still happening out there, and we're all about that. And it's not just two-wheelers either. It's the uh, NASCAR wheel and modifieds. It's a whole lot of other uh, other folks too. So we're hoping that we can uh, gather up some new motorcycle race fans from the automo automotive racing world. And we're actually hoping that uh, some of our motorcycle folks maybe will find some uh, motorsports they like of the four-wheel variety too. Just weld them all together and have fun. It's all racing when you get down to it. I want to say thank you to one of our long-standing uh, partners uh, in AMA Pro. by DeSalvo down the back straight away. Just kind of set him up, passed him all down in the hard breaking zone in this game. I tell you what, uh, if wherever you are, uh, right there on your smartphone, you could be keeping up with uh, the uh, live timing and scoring of every AMA Pro Racing product, thanks to our friends at Cortec. Cortec Performance Gear is a proud sponsor of AMA Pro Road Racing's timing and scoring pages on amaproracing.com. Make sure to check out the latest Cortec gear at your local stocking dealer. You can also download the AMA Pro Racing app for your smartphone from the App Store to check out live timing and scoring, season point standings, as well as all the latest news from AMA Pro Racing. Cortec, maker of high-performance apparel, boots, and luggage for the performance motorcyclist. Learn more at Cortec.net or CortecPerformance.com. Kimco USA, an official sponsor of AMA Pro Road Racing and AMA Pro Flat Track, performance without the high price. Watch for Kimco scooters all around our paddock. From 50cc to 700cc, Kimco scooters are always the choice for the highest quality at the most exceptional value. Get more fun and style than you bargained for. Check out the complete line of Kimco scooters at KimcoUSA.com. Kimco, choose your own path. To our live flag to flag coverage from Daytona International Speedway of the 73rd running of the Daytona 200. I rode a Kimco scooter from Daytona Beach to Los Angeles, California and back last year for the AMA Pro Flat Track Finals. I can attest they're good machines. Uh, we have so much going on here in the booth. Um, Josh Heron became the second youngest winner of the historic Daytona 200. Heron was 19 years old two and a half months shy of his 20th birthday. We've got a bad one on the racetrack. Oh, that's DeSalvo and Westby, DeSal both of them We believe down. it to be DeSalvo and Westby, and they're both on the ground, but they're both on their feet, which is a good news. But two of our top riders in the 200 have taken a big one here. Oh, I'm He's not sure what happened right there, but that was gnarly. Going into turn one is where that went down at. I don't know if there's something on the racetrack down there. It didn't look like they came together from what I saw. Maybe we can get a replay of that. Oh yeah, I'm sure certain we'll get something. That was, it looked pretty nasty. Thank goodness for the uh, air fencing. 
Uh, very helpful uh, device. We've got a waving yellow in that area, waving yellow for our stock car fans. We'll tell you that a waving yellow indicates you cannot. And here we go real quick down to the Yamaha Extended Service guys for a quick up-close look at a uh, pit stop here in the 200. Garrett Gerloff right there. That's Daddy Beach. Sorry, Daddy Beach is not a real player in the front runners, but he's uh, nevertheless, he's still running. And he'll pick up two spots with that crash right there. He'll, he's running seventh, so that bump him up to fifth. If he comes back out and everything goes well. There's a look under the uh, Yamaha tent. Again, the waving yellow indicates that you cannot make a pass. So the waving yellow, you have to hold your position. You can't pass anyone through that segment of the racetrack. Everywhere else, you're still green, you're still racing. There's a stiff penalty for passing under a waving yellow. Goodness. And, we're, and uh, we are uh, going to get perhaps another look at the incident down in turn one. And uh, we're going to take maybe another, get a look at one more pit stop. And when we come back, we'll take a look at what may have happened uh, down in that part of the racetrack. You can get a good look at these machines as they head down pit lane here to the attention of their crew. There's Blake Young, number 79, easing into uh, his pits. I think he's been kind of on down a little bit further. I think he's having issues, Barry. I saw him earlier. He moved out of the way for the leaders. Looked like he's... Uh, He's definitely having some issues here with that bike. So it appears we're going to watch another pit stop from the Yamaha Extended Service guys. So perhaps this is the pit stop that you've been waiting on. Yes, we are. The Yamaha Extended Service guys are poised. They're waiting uh, for their rider to arrive. I'm, I'm assuming this could be Gerloff coming in, you think? It should be. That was Beach on the last run. And, and this should have separated the pack. We'll see if... Uh, um, with that crash into turn one right there, the two of the top runners are out. You can see that that tire they're about to put on, that's a scuff tire, right, Scott, we're seeing right there? Uh, what a heartbreaker. What a heartbreaker. Goodness gracious. Yeah, that's a tough luck that's for Dane, Westby. That's Dane Westby. And he's kind of banged up, too. He hit the ground hard. He sandpapered his uh, 1.3 millimeter thick leather. Here we go. Here's our pit stop. Here's Garrett Gerloff. He, down to the 50 mile an hour speed limit. Now he's uh, smoothly going to come in. It's important that you hit your marks here, Scott. And he does. That's very common. That's exactly where you want to be. This is water bottle. You need that drink of water for the run to the finish line and See now. the guy fueling. He's got a fuel sock. He's got to be in a flame suit. He's got to have a fuel sock on. That was Rider has to be off That's the bike. Terrible. Sweet. Exactly. Buttoned up and gone. Nobody got in a hurry on that, and it went just perfect. Again, sometimes going slower is fast and uh, prevent that mistake that you don't need right now. Gerloff uh, needs a good run here. And uh, we are, man, we are working through it here. Another shot of Dane Westby. He's getting him a drink. The Wolverines out of it here today, and here's here why. Here we got it. Coming into here's one right why. here. Uh, we got Westby right there. Just got the thing backed in a little bit and got out of the shape. Oh. There was nowhere for DeSalvo to go. DeSalvo got out there near the white line. That's a dirty section of the racetrack. So when he started to tip the bike in, the back end stepped out on him. It looked like Westby might have went down a year too early. Look. It's hard to say. Look. Oh, he yes. just got on the brakes. It, he right. tried, to, tried to avoid Westby. He right. got out wide in, in no man's land, really. And the track's dirty out there, and the back end just let go on him. There's nothing out there for grip, is there? No, nothing. No. And thank goodness for airbags again. That airbag is the greatest invention of our that lifetime. The, now we're going to watch this in real time, Scott Russell. Yeah, watch it coming in here. This Westby right here, he's the guy that kind of kind of got it going there. This is the guy that took the nasty high side that we uh, are going to get another look at here. That it just It only usually shakes back twice, and then it's over. Boom. Yeah, it's kind of crazy what happened. Gosh. It's almost like he went down one gear too much, and, and the back end jumped out on him. Um, or he could have gone into a false. There's a lot of different things that could have happened. DeSalvo hit the ground hard, too, really. He did, but it's good to see both of them up walking away. That's and, the value of good gear. These are the best helmets you could buy. You can buy these off the shelf. They're six, 700 bucks, but they're the best protection a motorcyclist can have uh, when you hit the ground. He's going to get him a big drink here. I mean, yeah, you talk about safety equipment, man. I'll tell you, it's come a long way in time. And now, look, I like this. This is a privateer pit stop team. We've watched the Yamaha guys. This is your privateer pit stop. 
They're doing a good job. These guys probably never make pit stops. I mean, ever. They all do practice this weekend getting ready for this race. Of course, I know you and I both, we've got a soft spot in our hearts for the low-budget privateer teams. We just do. Yeah, I mean, that's probably a difference of about 10 seconds is what you just saw from maybe, maybe more from the, from the factory team. But nevertheless, they got it done and got him back out there. It's a good pit stop, really. That's the Geico team right there. M4, they've been in this business about 34, 35 years. Uh oh, had a little problem there. Get this machine refired, but it did fire and he's down and away. It's the AMA Pro official on site. They uh, are obviously overseeing uh, all of the action. New shirts, they've got the Dunlop emblems on them, uh, and they look really good, I think. Like little. Yes, sir. Smiley, happy people down there on the hot pit lane. Glad to see that uh, Dane Westby and Jason DeSalvo are good. We have uh, 17 laps remaining here in the 73rd running of the Daytona 200. Oh man, Dane. Yeah, he knows it was a mental mistake. I mean, he made that mistake, whatever happened. Unless something happened to the motorcycle, it looked like, uh, it looked like to me it went down in the lower gear than he expected it. And when he got the clutch out, the back end stepped out. And that doesn't mean they didn't have a mechanical at the same time, so. I guess it could go either way. That was well, a quick shot of Elena Myers running through there, turn yep. one. Uh, looking for the leader right here. This is no, our that lead. was number 21, Elena Myers, that just zipped through our camera. We're trying to find Danny Essick right That's out him on right track. there. There's Danny coming through the tri-oval. Yes, sir. Danny Essick. He's really got it his way now. There's nobody pressuring him right now. Uh, Danny, Danny's got, got things going his way. He just needs to complete this thing uh, safely and, and hope for no mechanical issues and finish it strong. Yeah, he's got no pressure from behind. I'm still waiting for Jack Gagne to come by and click the timing and scoring. And he's nowhere in sight yet. So Jack Gagne is definitely uh, back and, in some way. Alex Hayden uh, has uh, sent us a Twitter to you, Scott. Did the Salvo's bike put something down on the racetrack? It didn't look like Westby was really out of shape. It looked like he may have hit something. Well, Westby was in front of the Salvo, so it wouldn't have been anything to do with that. That's why I think the bike was went into a neutral or something, or maybe down one gear more than he, and than he uh, was looking for, because the bike just jumped sideways as he left the clutch out for that final time. Right, or he was the in Salvo, the marbles when he was breaking. No, nah, he was on his line. He was right behind Essex. Uh, that was Westby. And then the Salvo, had to run it wide because they had a crashing bike in front of him. And when he when he went to turn it, he was just too far out in the dirt. And the track's dirty out there. Nobody runs out there. So his back end went sideways on it. Now, this is a cool question. This is from a, a maybe one of our, our fans, too, but as well, perhaps a uh, Rolex Rolex 24 driver. Uh, John Strother has uh, Twittered us in. Why do the bikes run a shorter international horseshoe as opposed to the Tudor sports cars? Uh, and he says, great cover. Let's have a recap here real quick, and we'll get back to that question. On the initial start, we're going to recover. This is the first half of this uh, Daytona 200. As you can see, it turned out to be about a nine-bike lead train for the, in the early part of the race. We whittled that away a little bit. Now we're only down to one guy out front. We had an epic race throughout most of the race until, you know, Yeah, he's, it's cool, too. There's, that's what's he's, that's he's like, actually going high, dude. You yeah, know, here I hey, come. Hey. We are the right. leaders. Can you please give us some room? And that's hard for these guys. They're right there in a battle of their own. Blue flags are sometimes hard to see when you're battling. So, you know, that's the characteristic of that time. And now we're coming to uh, our two-rider get-off that we so didn't want to see. But fortunately, both are okay. They go into turn number one, You can one, see Scott. Westby right on his line. And now as he lets that clutch out for the last time, and then DeSalvo tries to avoid him by going wide and gets in the dirt. Uh, and that's all it takes. I mean, they, these guys are on the edge all the time, every corner. So one slight mistake turns into something big like this. Wow. Luckily, they both walked away. That's, and uh, that was beautiful camera work as well right there, in my opinion. Talk about that question. That was the an international horse you just saw. They use that now. I think they shortened it because of the speed of the 1,000s now. When they arrive at that international horse, Internet, leading that international horseshoe, it used to be uh, a lot quicker now in the thousands, so they had to make it shorter. 
Thank you for that, Scott Russell. It's a, a replay of Danny Essling coming in for a pit stop here. He's, he's pumped, he knows he's really got it his way right now. It's his to lose here in the 200. He steps off the bike, he gets him a quick drink. He'll slap a new Dunlop on the back, refuel it with uh, some of that good fuel, some of that good Sunoco fuel, and down he goes. He's doing a great job keeping it together. He's, he's dominated the race. He's, he's set the pace for the whole whole way. I mean, there's a couple more leaders in there, but pretty much this has been Danny Essex's show all day long. And uh, you can see the team has done a great job every time he's come into the paddock. They've had good clean pit stops, and that's what you need, and a couple of mistakes by other riders. And then I don't know what happened to Jack Gagne, but he definitely had an issue, and it may have happened in the pits because he lost touch with the leader, but he's still a second place, solid second place with Jake Lewis in third now. We are uh, coming down to it here. We have uh, the, uh, the distance of a normal race is about what remains here in this Daytona 200. Lap 43 of 57 in the record book. So we're getting down, down to it here with 14 to go. And it's Danny Eslick, number 69. Uh, up at the top of the order, uh, last uh, their turn and laps at about the 151 range. Jake Gagne, number 32, in the two spot. Number 85, Jake Lewis, running in the three spot. Bobby Fawn running fourth. J.D. Beach up into the top five now in the fifth spot. Garrett Gerloff of the uh, Yamaha Extended Service Team running in the eighth spot. And Kyle Wyman, who we've talked about earlier in the race, he now moves up into the seventh spot, which is very good. We look at a, a former winner, a Jake Zipke, back in the 10th spot, number 98, Zipke. Here's the young phenom, Joe Roberts. He's running 11th. Former Daytona 200 winner, Joey Pascarella, right there with him in the 12th spot. Benito Solis, one very talented young man who one of these days is gonna to rise to the top of this sport. Number 35 back in the 19th spot. A uh, quick question from Courtney Bennett on Twitter. Hey Scott, does the old don't lead the last lap strategy still hold true with the new technology on these bikes? Well, if you're Danny Essen, yeah. You'll yep. be able to lead the last lap with no problem. If there's another a uh, bunch of guys around you. Like uh, in Superbike. Elena Myers has won it from the front of several years ago in the Supersport class. It's rarely done, but it has been done. But that doesn't seem to be what's going to happen here today. You, you never know, you never say never. We still got a long way to go. This is going to be the longest 13 laps of Danny's career right here. The first part of this race has gone nicely. He's had somebody to battle with. Now he finds himself out there all alone with the racetrack. And, and sometimes it's easy to make more mistakes when you kind of get lax and you, you don't have any pressure and you don't push as hard. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Danny's notched it back to the 151 range and he's just cruising. So that's the answer to the don't lead the last lap. And if you'd watched earlier today, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I don't know. It's cool if you did. It's cool if you didn't. But in the uh, Superbike race, you would have seen uh, Roger Hayden might be saying, uh, I wouldn't advise being in the lead on that final lap. You know? Yeah, typically you don't want to be leading it as you come out. But Typically, you don't. Oh, this yeah, is something we were talking about when that crash happened. We thought Josh Heron was the, was the youngest rider. It's apparently, Barry, there's someone else. Heron was 19, two and a half months shy of his 20th birthday when Andres was only 18 and about to turn 19 when he won on the old beach course in 1955. So Brad Andres, long-standing record as the youngest 800-200 winner uh, uh, ever is safe. I'm thinking this is from Greg White too, isn't it? No, this is from a friend Somebody of mine. Somebody else, at least from now. So hey, let's go down trackside and check in with Danielle. Danielle, it's you. I just got an update from the M4 Honda team. Jake and Joe Roberts, Jake Zemke and Joe Roberts both had great pit stops. They've done their two, they're done for the race. Melissa Paris also had hers. She did lose a spacer out of one of her, out of one of her tire changes. She's since pulled back in and getting it fixed, as you can see behind me. Oh, very good. Good pit stop and uh, good reporting from Danielle Teal down there in a little bit of light breeze. Beautiful sunshine. And we had, um, we were talking earlier and uh, we were asking who the youngest winner was. And now 
now we can talk about who is the uh, oldest Daytona winner. It was Miguel Duhamel or Duhamel, depending on which who you are and what they tell you it is on that day. People used to debate, is it Duhamel, is it Duhamel? Well, I think they had so much fun with it that when a reporter would ask, they, one day they would say it was Duhamel, and the next time they'd ask them, they would say it was Duhamel, and it became, I believe, kind of a fun game that they played with their last name. Nobody ever says it's the same, am I right? I'll just call him Miguel. It that, makes it a lot easier. That's You're so practical-minded, <laughs> Scott Russell. My old buddy. Um, Let's throw it down trackside and uh, see if we can get a little bit of an update from Danielle Teal on a situation we've been talking and following. I just caught up with Chuck Graves over at Graves, the Yamaha Extended Service Graves Yamaha team. Garrett did have a little bit of a get off. He came in, he got it worked on, but he chose not to change the front part of his bodywork. So he's riding without a windscreen right now for the Daytona 200. Thank Tim you, Robinson. I found out what happened to Garrett Gerloff. He tipped over back in the race right now and run in the sixth spot. Well, how does that impact his uh, his his little still air pocket? Has got to be diminished without a windshield. I guess it's all good. Yeah, he's, he's probably out there running a, a lonely uh, sixth, if I had to guess. But but we don't we haven't seen him on camera here in a while. That's very cool. Uh, Richard 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 Lemon uh, twits, tweets us a question and he says is this race being broadcast on any cable channels the answer is no uh, and and the people over in London the people over in China the people in Spain uh, the people over in Europe think that's very cool that it's not on a broadcast channel because they couldn't be watching it uh, so for lots of folks around the world this is the greatest thing ever hey and if you said but, but wait I have to watch it on my laptop no, you don't. If you're at home, you just run a little HDMI cable over to your big screen on the wall, and boom, you've got big screen, detailed, high-def coverage. We've got another rider on the ground. It's a Yamaha Extended Service Machine. That looks like JD Beach to me. It does. I'm pretty sure that's JD. Oh, that's going up onto the banking, too. So that air fence looks like it's done its job right there. I mean, that's not the place you want to get off. No, and he's having a little bit of trouble either refiring the machine or getting the clutch action going his way but they kind of flood them out when they lay on their side gotcha. a little bit so he's getting it going again and wow wow, wow. that's uh, that's a turn of events right there and i tell you what else if that is jd and i'm pretty sure it is that's something you never see jd beach doesn't put it on the ground it's very rare at least i'm not saying never but rather unusual darn it 46 of 57 laps and you're laying on the ground wishing you weren't that close to the end. And JD was running pretty good at the time. He was shown fifth on the leaderboard, but now he'll begin to rapidly tumble down the Cortec uh, live timing uh, and scoring because he's uh, gonna, be, gonna be dropping. That'll be a benefit to Kyle Wyman and, and Gerloff. Uh, Wyman certainly will make a move around Beach. I think Gerloff already was in front of JD. But uh, that's a boost to Kyle Wyman. It'll give him one spot up the food chain here in the finishing order. As J.D. falls to eighth, and we won't need to watch that descent because he's going to go way on down the leaderboard now. Well, there goes Danny Essex as he goes into turn one right now. And he's a Jake Gagne just watching the lap times. And Danny had a little bit of a slow lap drop back into the high 52s. And Jake was still in the 51s, but now Danny's right at that, and he's back in the 51s right now. As you see him out breaking some of the slower riders into that international horseshoe right now. But Jake Gagne is not that far behind him. If Danny makes too many mistakes, well, you'll see Jake. He's coming out of turn one. He's kind of got a nice lead still, a good cushion right there. But anything can happen in this race. So there he is coming into the attention of the uh, crack crew from the Yamaha Extended Service. Monster Energy Great Yamaha team. And uh, he's definitely got a little bit of bodywork damage on it. They're going to work on the machine. Probably got a foot peg broke off that right side. I'm guessing they're working on that. They might be changing uh, rear sets on both sides of the motorcycle. I don't know. There's a little bit of a dent in the gas tank, the fuel tank. But, yeah, they're working on rear sets here on this side. Body work coming off. They're probably going to slip a new set of body work on it. There's Zeus Fasteners. Little quarter turn there. 
you'll have all those fasteners off and that lightweight bodywork in your hand. I don't of course, they've got brand new stuff already high. painted up sitting by the wayside ready to go on the bike. Uh, no such problems to befall this man who's certainly, if he can uh, do 10 more laps, he will say it has been a storybook experience here this weekend at Daytona International Speedway because, honestly, uh, he has had everything perfect from this the very start of this weekend to right now. Danny Essex's gonna be the happiest guy at podium today. Will that not be fun, Scott? Hang on for it tonight. It's on tonight for it's sure. <laughs> I've been that guy. I know what it's like to be out front, <laughs> counting the laps down, looking at that big leaderboard in the infield, just saying, counting them down. He got nine more to go, praying nothing happens to that motorcycle, I praying nobody spills oil, praying nobody gets in your way, and you're just trying to just keep it together and, and just bring it on home right now. Danny's had a great weekend in every form. He's won the Rolex. He had a great run in the Harley race, and now leading the Daytona 200 could win his first. He got to meet Joey Chitwood and get a Rolex from him. What a cool deal. Uh, if Maybe if I meet Joey one day, he'll give me a Rolex too. I don't think so, though. Hey, I've had that experience in a stock car. Uh, if you get all that sheet metal in that round track car on that pavement, you're, you're leading, it's, you know, you got a pretty nice little lead. There's about 30, 40, 50 laps to go. You are hearing every, you can't believe in that sheet metal car what all you hear happening. Man, oh man, it is crazy what all you imagine going on in that thing. And when it all works out and it's your day, it feels good. Winning the uh, Daytona 200 is uh, it's a game changer. No question about it. Uh, yeah, watching Danny just kind of get through this traffic nice and smooth down the yep. back straight. Yeah, buddy, Danny Eslick working it. He's got it his way, big time draft. Now let's throw it down trackside to our partner, our colleague on the hot pit, Danielle Teal. Very unusual sight down here in the Yamaha Extended Service Monster Energy Grave Yamaha Pit. If you remember last year, their riders were 1-2 at the end of the race, but here today, both of their riders have gone down in the Daytona 200. You know what, Scott? That is an unusual turn of events right there for both the Yamaha guys to be in the, uh, their bikes off the racetrack. It, it is very much so, but uh, you know, that's that's the nature of Daytona. You never know, it's a long race. And you gotta keep it together, man, not for 57 laps. And sometimes that's difficult. Well, that's just so, so unusual, but it has occurred to them. Uh, Danny Eslick right there, number 69. Whatever, uh, the, whatever kind of deal he struck with the riders discount team, He's going to live up to his end right here today if this thing ends this way. And their uh, investment will have been a pretty smart one for them because you're not going to be able to open any magazine uh, in the States or perhaps around the world. You're not going to be able to go to any websites that cover our sport anywhere. Uh, this afternoon, of course, the web stuff, it's instant. It's like us here at uh, fanschoice.tv. It's just instant. Uh, the... Uh, the uh, print stuff will all be out tomorrow and or whenever, and boom, it's it's going to be all about riders discount. It's going to be all about triumph. If it happens, we don't want to jinx him, and we certainly can't get too far out ahead of ourselves. But he's probably beginning to get a little bit of comfort in the fact that we are eight laps from bringing this one to a conclusion here in the Daytona 200. Got to be feeling pretty good right now. There's Joe Roberts. He's going to go home with a, a, a good 10th place finish if that's the way it ends for him here today. The young phenom doing it for the M4 guys. Keith Code, his mentor over the years, bringing him up through the program. He comes to uh, comes to the AMA comes to the AMA Pro uh, Road Race for the very first time as a 16-year-old rookie pro racer with a new. Um, license in his pocket and boom he puts a win in the in the checker in the column everybody says no nah, that's a fluke that's not going to happen again so he comes back for the next round and pow he does it again joe roberts running up in the 10th spot right now and looking like that may be uh, pretty close to where he's going to end up here this afternoon hats off to all of our twitter followers at ama pro sbk we really appreciate all your input today it's for us uh, here in the booth uh, Scotty and I, it has really made this a fun race to call because your input has been incredibly great. Your questions are unbelievable. Very, very cool. We thank you so much for uh, helping us uh, along here playing the game. Looky here. Here's Taki. He's uh, watching live in China right now. Glad to have you on board. Here's 
uh, Mega Racing, uh, come on, Triumph from Pool Dorset, UK. Some of your UK, there's a lot of followers of Triumph over in the United Kingdom, believe me. And there, uh, many of them are tuned into our broadcast here this afternoon. Scott, last year on CBS Sports Network, no, no offense to CBS Sports, you guys did a fabulous job, but the guys in the UK wouldn't be privy to that broadcast, would they? It'd be tough to catch it, but not now, not anymore. They're out there enjoying it right now, rooting his triumph, triumphs on, and, and Danny's doing, flying the flag for you guys pretty well over there right now. He's got about six laps to go. He's going to be the winner of the Daytona 200. There's Javier De La Vega. He says it's a tough break for Barrett Long, and it is. We hate to see that, too. He had a good qualifying run. Great job with the broadcast, guys. I got the laptop hooked to the TV, Barry. We're like, yeah. Like that a whole lot. We're looking at a fairly. We're not looking at a big screen here, Scott. There's guys at home with way bigger TVs. We're standing right in front of it, and we can see start finish here at Daytona Live and much pit road. So it's a good gig for us. Lap 50 of 57 are in the record book, and we are closing in with seven to go here. Danny Esley in the Florida sunshine heads off into turn number one. There he is. A good look at the riders' discount. Triumph Daytona 675 triple. This will be a special day, you know, as I look back through the uh, through the history of the Daytona 200 winners, according to this book, this will be the, the fourth time only that Triumph will have won the Daytona race. So, would, would that be Gary Nixon who won the last time on the Triumph? It's Gary Nixon, the last time in 1967. Yes, sir. So, this is a good deal, and Nixon and Nessa, they were buddies, man. So, I know that. Hey, That's there's, very there's some cool. kind of connection going on here. Somebody riding on back with him right now, I kind of wonder. I've got a feeling Danny will be mentioning Go Gary down there in Gatorade Victory Lane. If he gets there again, we don't want to jinx him. Sometimes you don't <laughs> want to talk about a guy say, hey, guys, don't give it to me yet. Uh, look at him working it here, Scott. All the confidence in the world all weekend. He's been loose like you've talked about many times this weekend, especially during this race. He's happy, he's excited. Fans are gonna see some great burnouts, some great wheelies, and hear some fun interviews at the end of this one. Hey, he's really doing the job right now. His last lap by was a 150.8. His fastest of the race is a 150.2. So he's staying with the program, and that's what you want to do as a rider. You get in the zone, you start hitting your marks. These are the lap times I run. Sometimes when you back it off a little bit, Barry, it's easy to make a mistake, and that's the last thing Danny wants. So he said, hey, I'm going to stick with my program. I'm going to keep riding the wheels off this thing, and if it works out, I'm going to win this thing. That's why you're the color analyst on this team. That is so true. You just If you're a casual woods rider out there, and uh, you ride the woods, a lot you, you train and you train and you train but maybe it's that last lap of the day when you're cruising that you end up going down and breaking something uh, I, I want to find this tweet again uh, there was a cool one here but oh here it is Eric Yost um, said uh, okay well it's right down here there you go Eric Yost he said I would like to thank fanschoice.tv for showing my favorite sport and I want to say the cameramen are doing a fabulous job. So we wanted to pass that along to the camera guys, and they are. They're giving us great views, a great view right there of Danny Eslick, five to go. And old Slick, he's going to do it. He's the pride of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. He was at the flat track show last night. I'm telling you, that pair of sandals out there in the dirt, he's all dirty, looked like a cowboy, he didn't care, he was just happy, he's got that. He's already got one Rolex Barry, we're gonna get another one. My brought my announcing partner at Flat Track, Scotty Doodler, he's from Oklahoma City. There are a couple of old Oklahoma dirt track guys. But right now, you know what? There is a danger. He can't lose focus here for a single minute. I mean, that bike's been on the racetrack 200 miles. Uh, he's been out there 200 miles. It's really easy to drop a motorcycle, no matter yes, how good you are. I think, I think he's got everything going in his favor. Uh, obviously, the, the Triumph is uh, is good on the tire. Looks like he's got somebody trying to race him down the back straightaway. That's the last thing you want is somebody trying to race with the leader as he uh, makes his way around, trying to win this thing. But they scrub that guy off pretty quick and move on. But, uh, you know, he's done well. He, he's actually riding the bike better than anybody out here today. He's, getting the thing upright coming out of turn one. He's making that a straight shot through that little kink as they come around the guardrail. So he's, he's, he's being easy on the tire. The Triumph's being nice to the tire. And uh, he's managed to stay focused the whole time. And it's hard to stay focused for, for 57 laps. I mean, there's been a lot of things thrown at him, other riders passing and whatnot. And now it's just him and that racetrack for about five, four more laps as he passes Here's a cool tweet from Nico Vivarelli. He says, great memories of 2012. 
when I have race on Daytona 200 with Team Apex on Yamaha. That was an amazing race. Okay, so here we come. We're gonna get a little bit of a replay here. Not necessarily all that pleased. Nah, you know, I mean, the thing is, is, is this has happened before. You know, guys get a beat on a guy like that and they think, oh, I'm, I'm gonna do something with him. And then, you know, Danny definitely not happy with a guy trying to race him like that. And just, uh, there you know, comes. just uh, <laughs> let him know that he's number one right here as they come up on the bank. And, I'll probably strive to play next time. Yeah, yeah awesome. he, and he, and he, had, he actually it's put it. It's kind of how you uh, rush for us red racers. We, we communicate with each other with your helmet on. Well, it, you know, we as motorists, we do it out on US-1 <laughs> and uh, International <laughs> Speedway sometimes. So can't imagine, Danny. You know, funny thing is when you were talking about this guy racing with that's not what you want as it was happening live, I was thinking, well, maybe he'd kind of think that was cool for a minute to get to race with somebody because he's been like a lonely old Maytag repairman yeah. out there by himself. But yeah. apparently I, his he was thinking like you. He, he probably didn't know Danny was leading the race, but he'll go back and he'll have him some TV time. He probably won't be happy with him this season. Well, he might be. He, he know, might got be. A, we talked about him. And he said he's number one. Hey? <laughs> Number, as my partner Scotty Dublin says, number 11 on the motorcycle, number one in your heart. Well, that may be what Eslick was trying to tell him right there, what number 11. But 53 of 57 laps. It's Eslick, Jake Gagne running second, Jake Lewis running third, Bobby Fong with a great run today in the fourth spot. Garrett Gerloff recovering here to run in the fifth spot, Kyle Wyman. Mr. Steady here throughout the course of the Daytona 200. He was back there uh, outside the top 10 for a long time, and he continues to run uh, up in the order. Now Kyle Wyman, number 33 on the Millennium Technologies machine, is up into the sixth spot. Number 68, uh, Luke uh, Staple. Can't remember the last name. Uh, I do know that, but anyway, Luke. Uh, I'm struggling. Luke Stapleford from England up into the seventh spot. Jake Zipke, eighth. And uh, we're, we're going to have a good post-race celebration here in a minute. Boss Jane Scooby up into the uh, ninth spot. Joe Roberts, tenth. Steve Raps running eighth. Joey Pascarella in the uh, 13th spot. 54 of 57 complete. It is winding down here. And uh, already there's beginning to be all the officials and uh, Daytona International Speedway folks assembling down in Gatorade Victory Lane for a huge victory podium celebration to come after this uh, Daytona 200. Danny Essek as he makes his way through the chicane right here again. Just a couple more laps as you see him wheeling out across the grass right there. Scott, we're getting down to Got it. Them down. Getting down to it. Stephen Clark says, way to go. Danny, you're showing your professionalism again here. <laughs> we're about to start seeing some celebration. There's one right there, a little backing it out of turn one, roasting the tire. This is when Danny's going to start playing around a little bit. He knows that he's just got a couple more laps to get this thing done. You're going to see him probably waving his buddies right here one more time. The pit board guy, he looks over and he says, yep, this is mine, man. It's mine to lose at this point. I wouldn't celebrate with it, right? No, you got to do it. And the victory uh, lap will be a good one here. He'll be communicating with all the fans around Daytona International Speedway for sure with wheelies, stoppies, a little burnout action. Danny uses a lot of body English anyway. He's yes. loose on the bike always. Just kind of trying. They've, they've done a great job giving them a great motorcycle. I don't, I don't know that all the testing leading up to Daytona. I don't know that the signs were there for him, but, uh, but nevertheless, when he showed up down here, he really stepped it up, running the Rolex, and now uh, really dominate this race for the most part. Maybe some other issues from other riders, but nevertheless, Danny, Danny, and Dane Westby 
two Oklahoma boys really showed him the way up front. Westby had an issue, fell off in turn one, took the salvo with him. And, uh, anyway, this is Danny Essence's day right now as he comes by. He's going to have one more lap. Oh, man, this is what we love to hear. This is why we do this. Thanks so much for your online streaming on this tweet. First time ever that I managed to follow this great event live now. And that's a great from the Netherlands. So that's very, very cool. We're glad to have you uh, folks in the Netherlands on board as we are coming to the white flag. It's in the air here in the Trioval at Daytona International Speedway. White flag in the air for the Daytona 200. There goes Jack Gagne across the line. I can see him from the booth right here. He's got to be happy. He's not going to be over the moon. But to bring this thing sack at home, and he's got to be happy with that. There's what you're looking to win right there. Beautiful trophy awaits down in uh, Gatorade Victory Lane. Thanks for all the help. Giving me the strike signal all day long. Waving at his buddies up there on the back straight away. He's got half, a trap, right half a lap away, man, from making history right here today. Scott, you know all about what that feels like. I can see you're reliving it right it. now, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Got to feel good. I love this guy, too. He's just such a great, great guy to have the pattern. Murdell Peck says, hey, great job. I'm so happy about this. Been watching racing for 50 years. Hey, Scott Russell, see you at Thunder Hill. Thunder Hill, I'll be back out there eventually. Had some good times out there with you guys riding, and uh, thanks for tuning in today. Here's some Tim Lemke said, in this politically correct world, you guys replayed a Danny Eswick flipping off a back marker, and you even talked about it. Thanks. <laughs> hey, welcome to Internet TV, man. Welcome to uh, we got a little more freedom in this one. We promised the fans the fan experience as if they were at the racetrack. If you'd been sitting over there, you would have seen him do it. Why not? Goes. Last time around, let NASCAR three and four. He's celebrating, man. I'm telling you, there's some screaming going on inside that helmet right now. The riders discount triumph. He put it on the pole for the Daytona 200. He has outdistanced 37 other competitors over 200 miles. And now he crosses I the stripe it. here in the trioval. And Danny Eslick wins the 73rd Daytona 200. What a feeling. You gotta keep an eye on camera on this guy. There's gonna be some celebration now. Oh yeah, they'll be charting this course. Jake Gagne will uh, come across that stripe in just a moment. There's pretty good distance back to Gagne. Now Gagne will cross. He's your second place uh, rider here this afternoon. Number 85, Jake Lewis will be thrilled uh, with the results of this effort. I can guarantee you Jake Lewis will, would uh, take and uh, enjoy a third place finish here in the Daytona 200 on the Mean Motorsports uh, ride. That's his first ride on that Yamaha. Aslik uh, enjoying, he's celebrating with Gagne. There's your first and second place competitors. Lewis crosses the strike. Now we're looking for Bobby Fawn on the latest motors. Castro Triumph Daytona 675. I saw it, was he doing some off -road Well, he's gonna ride, ride over there to, uh, to his buddies on the back, and that's where his pit board guys standing. He might pick him up and give him a ride around the track. No, that's the celebration. This is his boys. Wow. David East, uh, David Eastock crew over there on the back straight away. Look at this. This is Look it. Look at this. Can you imagine what he's doing here? This is awesome. These guys have been waiting on that Look, he's for a long, he, long time. He's already hearing the AMA Pro officials you know, are going to be standing there. Well, dude, come on, we got to get this on, but you got to love it. Danny Eslick's such a popular character. So many friends. He's been in this game long enough now. He uh, He's very comfortable with who he is. Garrett Gerloff will uh, settle for a fifth place finish here this afternoon. Gerloff for the Yamaha Student Service Monster Energy Team. Luke Stapleford uh, on the Profile Racing Triumph from England will be your seventh place finisher as we continue to watch Danny Esley. We call him Slick over in the dirt track world. A little bit of burnout action here on the Triumph. He's going to get that rear slick up a little bit for everybody over there. He's making his own weather over there. That's how powerful the man feels like he is right now. You just beat uh, 37 of the best American uh, motorcycle racers. Again, this, this is historic for a lot of reasons. It's uh, been since 69 when Triumph won this thing with Gary Nixon. And uh, now he's put a Triumph on the box. Triumph will forever be remembered as the last middleweight 600 class bike to win this race. And next year it'll be a big four super bike specs. Triumph's got 
got to be thrilled right now. This thing, they put so much into this, to this effort, and, and finally get this thing again to add to the list of your four of the, the history. Man, this is a special day here. And Daytona. you know, it's not just the Riders Discount Prime team that really is celebrating this because. You know, the latest motors racing guys have been working this prime package for two or three years now. There's a lot of people that put a lot of effort into developing this prime. They're reaping the benefits from it right now. Uh, and a lot of aftermarket suppliers that have come on board to support the Triumph effort in its return to America. Look at that on the banking at Daytona. A couple of dueling stand-up wheelies. Tell me the man can't ride. Ooh, that's a little scary right there. That's sketch, but he don't care. No, he don't care. He's a, he's a that's dirt who track he is. guy. That's, that's who he is. That's who he is. And that's why we love him. Uh, in a moment, we'll have Danielle Teal uh, joining us down in Gatorade Victory Lane. And following this broadcast, we will have an excellent piece for you. Uh, next Moto Champion, John Boucher, the executive producer, uh, and Danielle Teal, the associate editor of Next Moto Champion, has put together a 30-minute piece that I've got to tell you. If you haven't seen it yet during our uh, programming here this weekend, we highly advise you to stay on board for it. Give us 30 more minutes and we'll show you an inside look into the life of some of the riders you've been watching here this afternoon in the Daytona 200 uh, competing. Of course, now on at AMA Pro SBK, they're Congratulations are pouring in. Jay Clark says, thanks guys, this has been mega. First time I've been able to watch the 200 live from the United Kingdom. Thanks Fans Choice US, I uh, thank Fans Choice TV. Congratulations all around here. Thank you to Fans Choice for showing the happiness and celebration after the race. Great coverage, says Brian Mister. This is cool, we really love having you guys on board. Al, uh, Alexis Moreno, congratulations to Danny Eslick. Way to uh, celebrate. Harrison Withers, uh, congratulations Danny Eslick and Riders Discount on the well-deserved win. So your Twitter feeds have made it a lot more fun for Mr. Uh, Russell and I. Thanks for being on board for us. Well, he's got the flag in his hand. Looks like he's gonna take another lap real quick. Meanwhile, the throngs of folks are assembling down there in Gatorade Victory Lane. Scott, that's a that's like you're walking into the hallowed ground there. They're seated theater style all around you. We'll get a look at that when he gets in there. Maybe camera guys can show us a little bit. There's Danny Eslick with his Sunoco checkered flag. This is the favorite lap of your of your day when you get that when you get that right. flag and you let it let you get that last so, lap with that thing in your hand. That's very special. And he is going to end up where our Danielle Teal already is. Let's go down to Gatorade Victory Lane for the 73rd running of the Daytona 200. Danielle. I'm here with third place today, Jake Lewis. Jake, you looked very nervous at the start of the race, very concentrated, anyways. Tell me how the race went for you, and you ultimately went or came in third place. Congratulations. Yeah, you know, it was a pretty long race. Uh, you know, I was just trying to get focused before the start, but uh, I got a decent start. You know, I just made a few little mistakes at the beginning and was having some trouble in the braking area, and, uh, you know, I couldn't stay with the front group, so I'm pretty disappointed about that. But, you know, the second sin, I nailed that. My team had really great pit stops, and uh, I wouldn't be up here without my team. Uh, I wish I could have won, but, you know, I'm never disappointed with third here in the victory lane, so that's really great for me, and I uh, can't give up for my whole team enough. Uh, you know, pretty happy with third. Yeah, I'd like to say thanks for everyone watching online and uh, especially the people back in Princeton, Kentucky. Thank you for s supporting me. And, uh, you know, Yamaha, Motorsport.com, Mean Motorsports, my whole team, my pit board guy for sent out there for 57 laps. Showy helmets, Cortec leathers, Dunlop tires, everyone else, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> gotta love that kid right there. Jake Lewis is Jake Lewis is such a fine young man. I tell you, I've known him since he was about eight years old, and uh, watching him, watching him race all the indoors. All right, let's throw it down for uh, Danielle with our second place finisher. That's right, second place here today. Jake, you're no stranger to the podium, but it's got to feel really good to start the season off strong. Yeah, definitely start the start off the podium, especially here at the Daytona 200. Uh, I'm stoked. I'm stoked for the little Road Race Factory Red Bull crew. These guys work so hard in the off season to pay them off with a podium is is great. You know, there was a 
It was a fun race. It was tough. I was a little, definitely struggling a little bit in the infield, so it was everything I had to hang on to those guys, and Dane and Garrett and uh, Eslick, DeSalvo, all those guys were riding really, really awesome. So awesome race, and uh, thanks to the whole crew. Oh, that's so cool. Jake Gagne showing his Red Bull helmet. Right there behind him was, I call her the racing mom on that team, Mick Conkright, uh, Danny Walker's uh, longtime buddy and uh, good, good, good part of that team. She's, she's the moral support for those guys, you know? Oh, yeah. She's just great. Yep. Here now we're go. watching. Now he goes under the big Rolex Daytona sign here, the big clock. He makes his way, that left-hand turn that Scott Russell talked about. There's two of them. You make that left turn into the lane. Then you make that left turn on into Gatorade Victory Lane, and you can hear the uh, crowd down there just ripping and roaring. It is filled with people, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, and a very happy, excited young man. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. As soon as he gets that slick helmet off, that beautiful showy helmet, uh, we're going to throw it immediately to Danielle so she can capture his first thoughts as he gives Danielle a big hug. Danielle, we're going to go ahead and toss it to you right now. Perfect. That's right. I'm here with first place, number 69, Danny Eslick. Danny, it's been over four decades since Triumph got pole, even longer since they got a win here today since the late Gary Nixon got it. Congratulations on first place. Uh, that's uh, that's real cool. I didn't know Nixon was the last one. Uh, I guess I put in good hands in. I don't even know what to say right now. Thirsty. Thirsty. You ran almost a perfect race. Your pit stops were great. Tell us about how it went for you. This is a new team for you. Oh, it was amazing. Uh, you know, starting with that shiny new watch and. Uh, Got off to a great start, had a good battle there with Gerloff and Dane, and uh, I don't know, that was the shortest 200 miles I've ever rode in my life. I don't know, I don't know what to say right now, except for thanks, ridersdiscount.com, Triumph, everybody involved, uh, my mom, uh, just everybody, thank you. Oh my goodness, Danny Eslick, old slick from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma has uh, done it and he did it Scott Russell in yep. Danny Eslick style Watch back. he it never seemed to be a point in that race even when he was in the heat of the moment remember there were six riders behind him and I'm sure we're going to get some recap the last half of that race or something but even with uh, six or seven riders behind him breathing, the, breathing those exhaust fumes he was kicking his motorcycle like he's riding a horse he was waving at the crowd uh, all around this racetrack, all the way during uh, the uh, early part of the race, even when he was racing with guys, and yet at the 200 miles, and he said it was the shortest race of his life. That's that's a sign he was having fun. Do you, do you yeah, think? Yeah, oh, yeah, he was in his zone, and the Triumph worked flawlessly for him. You know, and when you got a bike like that that works that well, the tires are working that well, it makes your job very easy. And uh, you heard him say that was the quickest 200 miles that he's ever done, and so. Uh, Congratulations for, to him, and, 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 and I think we're going to see a lot more of that, that type of ride from Danny. Yeah, I'm going to unplug that. I do too, and, and let's go ahead now and throw it down to Danielle in Gatorade Victory Lane. Enjoy, Danielle. It's the Daytona 200 celebration. That's right. We're celebrating up here with 69. Danny has like, Danny, what an incredible race. It's a new team for you. you got this big trophy to take home. Like we said, it's been over four decades since Triumph has put it on pole and even longer since they've won a race since the late Gary Nixon. Congratulations on first place here today. Uh, thank you so much. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. That first stint to that first pit stop was pretty incredible, man. We were, uh, we were knocked down drag out like it was a sprint race. And, uh, you know, even after the second one, me and Dane, and I think it was DeSalvo hooked up. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, that, the last stint seemed like forever, but that was literally the shortest 200 miles of my life. <laughs> you look speechless. What do you have to say for your team? New deal for you this year. Congrats. Oh, uh, just hats off to them. Uh, Richard Stamboli is the guy I worked with like 10 years ago, my first year in AMA. So, you know, that's uh, kind of in a, in a big roundabout way. Here's a little payback for that first year. Congratulations. Let's hear it for first place here today, number 69, Danny Eslick. Very cool, very cool. There's the trophy. There's the man of the hour. Danny with the signature shades on. Daytona, there's no place like it in the world. Young man, you go ahead and uh, celebrate with your bad self. You just won the most historic motorcycle race in America. Scott Russell, forever his name will be etched uh, in stone as the last guy uh, in this decade of the decade of 
middleweight 600s to win America's most historic race. Great job, partner. Uh, Loved calling that race with you, Scotty. Thank you, Barry. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in on the first broadcast. It's awesome. Congratulations, Danny. All right. Okay, we're going to have a – before we go, we're going to do a Number quick recap of this race. race factor, uh, while they're still Jake celebrating, Jake, believe me, here, Scott Russell said it right a moment ago. The celebration is really going to begin this evening <laughs> for right. Danny Eslick and all of his uh, many, many friends. There's Gagne. Look how happy they both of them are. Uh, Danielle is uh, going to get a word here with Gagne. Let's let's Jake. go back down to Danielle and catch this down one. There. Very hot race. Tell us about how it went for you. Second place here today. Yeah, it's uh, our second place. We're on the podium. Uh, Got to give it up to the whole Road Race Factory, Red Bull crew. To pay uh, to give them, get all the hard work has paid off over the off season. Uh, would have liked to been able to battle with Day uh, Danny at the end, but he was riding awesome. Uh, Dane was riding awesome. DeSalvo, Garrett, all those guys. Uh, Seemed like kind of survival towards the middle on in and to the end. And uh, yeah, just made a little mistake on the last part and blew it. But um, yeah, we're at second place. I'm so stoked uh, for all these guys and the whole crew. And uh, thank you, everybody. And yeah. Congratulations, number 32, Jake Gagne. And let's go ahead and welcome to the stage, third place here today, the number 85 on the motorsport.com, Mean Yamaha, Jake Lewis. Jake, you looked really nervous at the beginning of that race. I know you were concentrating very hard. You said you made a few mistakes, but ultimately third place. Congratulations. Oh yeah, you know, there's nothing to be disappointed about being victory circle after 200 miles, 57 laps. You know, that was a really long race and uh, I would have liked to have been holding up that big trophy, but Danny was riding great all weekend. You know, uh, I got off to a really great start. The whole pack was at the front, the beginning of the race and, you know, I was just having a little bit of issues, so I couldn't stay right there with the beginning and I lost the draft. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't be up here without my whole motorsport.com. Yamaha, mean Yamaha team, and uh, you know they built me an awesome bike. You know the Yamaha R6 has handled great the whole weekend, and uh, big thanks to Gray's Motorsports for giving me a bike capable of being up here. And uh, I would have really liked to win, but you know uh, my team made great pit stops. I think we had the fastest pit stops there were. So uh, you know I just got to give it up to everyone. I wouldn't. I would just love being up here. Congratulations! Let's hear it one more time for our top three in the 73rd running of the Daytona 200. LT will cover the action for us all day. Thank you, Danielle. Pat, Thank you, Christy Lee, for in. yesterday. We're going to give you folks uh, at fanschoice.tv a quick recap of this Daytona 200. Scott Russell is going to be along, and we'll tap into his immense brain and experience. Here's <laughs> your race recap for the 73rd Daytona 200. And we went green, and... Away they go, off into turn number one for the very first time. Pick it up, Scotty. Uh, you saw S that kind of muscle his way through, and that's how he rode pretty much the whole race. When, when somebody would make a move on Danny, he would fight right back. And uh, he was bound and determined today to, to bring this thing home, you could tell, in the way he rode. But early in the race, it was a, it was a big swarm of riders, and it could have gone either way, you know. And it, and it went south for a couple of riders, as we'll see here in a minute. But it was a great run, Barry, all the way to that first pit stop. And then even after that for so long, and he could see Danny, like I said, if somebody made a move on him, he'd immediately make a move back. You could see him fighting with Garrett Gerloff there early in the race. Unfortunately, Garrett's day didn't end up like he wanted. He did end up fifth today. He ended up falling off the bike, and you could see him side by side high up on that banking. And you know what, Scott? If this had been a customary GoPro Daytona sport bike distance, this would have been a highly competitive race for 10 or 15 laps, you know, and even longer. I mean, there were six or seven of them going way deep into this thing. Eslick just outlasted all of them. That was the uh, 12 machine of Tomas Huerta out of the road race factory with some type of mechanical issue. A real crying shame as he was in the lead pack and really fired up to win this thing here today and actually had a legitimate shot. Le uh, attrition certainly did affect the outcome of this one right there. I'm impressed with the way Garrett Gerloff kept giving it to him. He would hand it to Eslick. He would pass him, Eslick would pass him back. We saw some great pit stop action from the Yamaha Extended Service Team. What great pit work we saw out of those guys today. And there's Danny Eslick 
after the pit stops. Fresh Dunlop rubber. Feels like Velcro, I'm sure, on that motorcycle right now. Good grip all around. Daytona International Speedway. Typical S like wheeling out of the corners. Yeah, I mean, basically it was his race today. I mean, he had some challengers, no doubt. You know, back again here this earlier in the race when there was DeSalvo as a player here, Westby. This may be a little issue right here where Westby loses out as they go into turn one. There had there was an issue right here. This is the part right here. It looked like Westby got to grab the downshift, let the clutch out. DeSalvo tried to avoid him, got out in the dirty part of the racetrack. His back end jumped out and uh, gnarly crash for both of these riders. Luckily, oh, a big hit right there for DeSalvo, but they're both tough. They both bounced back off the ground and walked away. Their goal's going to be on a little ibuprofen regimen for a couple of days after that. There's Westby, what a hit. A frustration factor over the top. They worked and they worked and they worked on the motorcycle, but still Danny Eslick prevailed. He's oh, still, yeah, I mean. still, he's still good. He knows he got a break right there. You don't want to see your competitors go down, but you know you got a break. Well, you know, I mean, he, he was, he was battling all the way through. He was going to be a, a dogfight, I think, to the end. But when you look back and then there's nobody there all of a sudden, and man, that's got to be a big weight lifted off of his shoulders. And in that part, it was just uh, managing the race at that point, staying out of trouble. Don't get collected. Don't get collected by any of the uh, the, the slower riders that you may encounter and, and uh, race the racetrack. Had this nice little encounter with a little lapper where he had to let him know he was number one in his heart a couple yep. times. He's speaking my language, and that's how you do it. That's unfortunate. Some of the guys don't see you coming, but here he is celebrating after it all with all his buddies on the infield straightaway, and uh, they all love him. He's a fan favorite, and you see why right now. Carrying the Sunoco flag high in the air here at Daytona. What a feeling. Not many guys get to enjoy that feeling right there, knowing you just won one of the most uh, coolest races in the world. And finally, you end up right there. Gatorade Victory Lane. One of the most famous victory lanes in all of the world, and certainly in America. And there he is at the World Center of Racing with that beautiful trophy and the money and all the fame that comes from winning the Daytona 200. Historically, big deal. It's the end of a decade of middleweights. He'll be the last guy. Four decades since Triumph put it in there, and he's put the Triumph in there again, giving the Triumph factory in, here in America a real shot in the arm. They've got a good bike, and now they've proven it to the world right there. They just won the Daytona 200, beating the formidable Yamaha factory team, uh, beating so many great teams. Uh, and, and there's your results right there. Eslick, Gagne, Lewis, Vaughn, Gerloff, Wyman, Stapleford made the trip over from England. He did it. He finished seventh. Former winner Jake Zimke finished eighth. And uh, Boston Kubik uh, did a nice job as well. Uh, so many of uh, these guys come from all over the world to compete in this race. Perhaps in 2015, uh, with the big boars returning and bringing Superbike specs back, Scott Russell will have even more uh, riders from other countries coming here to try to do what Danny Eslick just did, and that's go down to Gatorade Victory Lane, enjoy the spoils of victory, celebrate uh, in front of all the national media and international media that come here for such a world-class event. And at the end of the day, He's going to go home with a Rolex. He's going to go home with his leathers without a mark on them from not being on the ground all weekend long, and they're going to smell like champagne. Because <laughs> if it were me, I'd never wash them. Uh, those are the leathers I won the Daytona 200 in, and uh, they're going to smell like that champagne uh, forever. They're going to become a nice piece of history for him for the rest of his life. There's one thing Danny Eslick can say that no one can ever take away from him. I won the Daytona 200. What a show. Stick around for our post-race show by Next Moto Champion. It's a beautiful piece of 30-minute video. John Boucher, the executive producer of Next Moto Champion, and uh, his right-hand assistant, who's 
been a great pit road reporter for us today, the associate editor of Next Moto Champion, Daniel Teal, alongside. Great job today down on the hot pit and victory podium by Daniel Teal. Our thanks go to Christy Lee from yesterday, our color analyst, Scott Russell, in for the year. I'm Barry Boone. Goodbye. Enjoy the Next Moto Champion video. We'll see you from Road America at Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin.